the Winston Cup point standings. Rusty Wallace, who suffered that devastating crash two weeks ago at Talladega, is still on top of the points by 86 over Dale Earnhardt, who's on the pole here today. Davey Allison is third. The real battle in the top five is for fourth, just one point separating Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Sears Point, our first road course race of 1993. When you think of road course racers, you think of Rusty Wallace or Ricky Rudd or Ernie Urban, but maybe you should think about Dale Earnhardt. In the modern era, there have been 30 road course races. He has finished in the top 10, 22 of them, but he has never won a road course race. This could be the day. And how about Rusty Wallace coming back after the injury he suffered at Talladega? Is he ready for 300 kilometers here on this tough two and a half mile road course? For more on that, let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Bob, the good news is Rusty Wallace is here at Sears Point and has qualified his Pontiac in sixth starting spot. But who can forget the horror? Two weeks ago when we left Rusty, he was catapulting, somersaulting, tumbling across the start-finish line at Talladega Motor Speedway. Now, he underwent surgery on his left wrist just 12 days ago at Indianapolis by Dr. Terry Trammell. He has a pin in the wrist, and he's wearing a carbon fiber Kevlar cast, which is hinged at the wrist so he can handle the steering wheel. That shouldn't be a problem. His ribs still sore, may be some concern. Now, if he does have a problem and needs to get out of the car, they've got 1991 Trans Am champion Scott Sharp standing by to relief drive. Now, we might mention that Terry Labonte, also injured at Talladega, has real problems. He has a 1992 Trans Am champion. Jack Ball is standing by to relief for him. So it could be a super sub afternoon at Sears Point. Bob? Thank you, Jerry. Let's check now the starting lineup for today's race. On the pole, his second straight, Dale Earnhardt in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet, qualifying at 91.838. Alongside from Chesapeake, Virginia, Ricky Rudd in the Tide Chevrolet, car number five. Second row, Jeff Bodine in the Motorcraft Quality Parts Sports Thunderbird, car 15. And Ernie Irvin in the Kodak Film Chevrolet from Modesto, California. Third row, Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, the Valvoline Ford. And Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac number two. Fourth row, Wally Dallenbach, a great performance. Seven drivers broke the previous track record. Starting eighth will be Ken Schrader in the Kodiak Chevrolet. Car number 25. And let's take a look now at the rest of the starting lineup as the drivers are on their second parade lap. We should get the green flag next time around. You see Davey Allison starting there in the fifth row. And how about Jeff Gordon in the eighth row? P.J. Jones starting in the uh, seventh row in his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. Dorsey Schrader starting in row number 10. As the cars come down the straightaway, which leads them to corner number seven, this is an 11-turn road course that they'll compete on here this afternoon. Many of these drivers are from the Winston West series that also join the Winston Cup competitors when we come to the West Coast. There are 43 drivers that will be starting in today's race. There were some provisionals. Bobby Labonte had to take a provisional. Also, Herschel McGriff and Rick Corelli. Well, that, Jarrett, uh, looks like you're set for a day at the beach out there near Turn 7. Well, it might look like I'm at the beach with all this sand behind me. They put it there to stop the drivers if they slide off the track, and many of them do here in Turn 7. They come in here at a high rate of speed and then shift down into second gear into a flat turn. And you see a lot of slipping and sliding here. Pretty good place to pass if they can outbreak someone coming into the turn or set your opponent up going off the turn and out accelerate it. That's two ways you can pass here, but many times we see a little bumping going on while they're doing that. Now, there's another place on the track that they can pass pretty well, and that's down where Benny Parsons is. That's right, Ned. Turn 11. All you got to do is outbreak the guy, get in the corner, get under him. He has no choice. Well, he does have a choice because the entry in this corner is very wide. Sometimes they don't know you're there, and they cut across you, and both cars will spin out. Or another place, coming off turn 11. If the car in front of you slips, get under him, accelerate past him. The problem is the Winston Cup engine builder has been working night and day. They've got over 700 horsepower. You've got to be easy with the throttle. Otherwise, you can nail it and spin out as you come off turn 11. But either way, you're going to pass him in or off, maybe. Benny, I suggest that you head for higher ground because the next time they come your way, they will be under green. The pace car leads them down to the start-finish line. We should be underway here in just a moment for 74 laps of racing at Sears Point International Raceway. Dale Earnhardt leads the field down slowly. Ricky Rudd is alongside. Now the pace quickens and the green flag comes out. Last year, Ernie Urban 
jumped the field at the start and had to go clear to the back, but he came on to win that race. Such a reoccurrence this time. Dale Earnhardt took the green flag first and is leading as the rest of the field piles up through turns number three and four. Now they will go downhill into turn number five and turn six and then go on to the straightaway leading to turn number seven and Ned you should be able to see it. Indeed we can Bob as we go under the speed cut under the Goodyear Bridge and you can see how fast they're running coming into this turn then they break down coming in here Earnhardt goes very low into the turn he takes a little different line than does Ricky Rudd but so far everyone getting through and Rusty Wallace making a pass coming through the turn. This is a very high speed section of the race course turn now they're headed toward you Benny here they come Earnhardt still in the lead in that pole position there goes Wally Dallin back and Rusty Wallace this is turn 10 where Tommy Kendall the other day lost control during qualifying and wiped out the number seven and here's our new cable cam following the cars down in turn 11 and Ricky Rudd trying Earnhardt on the outside did not make the pass now he's going to drive on the inside. He's trying to out-accelerate, but the green good green a little bit too much horsepower, Bob. He cut the rumble strip there in turn number 11, but could not take the lead away from Dale Earnhardt. And so Dale continues to lead with Ricky Rudd running in second spot. Jeff Bodine is in third place. And in fourth is Ernie Irvin. And we're now riding with Tom Kendall in the Alan Kowicki Racing Family Channel sponsor machine. Here's John Kernan in the pit. Bob, as Benny said, Tommy wrecked the primary car on Friday. They had to put that back in. That was the road course car built specially for this year with all the legal tricks that you can have for a road course. So they had to pull out the backup car, but it's a pretty good car, too. It's the car that Allen ran fifth with most of the day here last year until he got a speeding ticket late in that race and wound up finishing 12th. But Tommy also injured his ribs on Friday, so Jimmy Hensley, who drives the car normally on the oval track, is here. He practiced yesterday afternoon, and if Tommy has to come out of the race car, Jimmy will be standing by to get released. And we have a pass there for third position as Ernie Irvin got to the inside of Jeff Bodine and took third spot. And you also saw as we were inside Tom Kendall's car that he passed a couple as he tries to make his way toward the front of the field. Well known road racer Tom Kendall is headed toward the front. And a crash. That's Jeff Davis in the Van K Ford. Stopped in the middle of the racetrack. Now he gets it going again. Looks like maybe he just spun out. No caution flag. That was coming out of turn six. He does get going again. Every car on the track has passed him, but he's coming through turn seven right now. Everything okay. And they're going by me in turn 11. Earnhardt still has the lead, but look at Ernie Irvin. Looks like he's closing in on him to me, Bob. Yeah, he's closing in on second place, Rudd. Bodine is back there in third or fourth position, and then Mark Martin. In the early stages of this race, the field gets strung out just a little bit. Here comes Wally Dollenbach and Rusty Wallace. Mark Martin having a good run in the Valvoline Ford to this point. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon from Sears Point International Raceway in California. Back with more in just a moment. ESPN Speed World is brought to you by Allied Signals Fram Filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. By Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. And by your local Yamaha dealer who invites you to see their exciting new line of motorcycles, ATVs, and water vehicles. Back at Sears Point, and the driver on the move is Ernie Irvin. He's right in front of you, Benny, and he's challenging Rudd for second. He is challenging. He tried to pass up in your corner a moment ago, didn't he, Ned? Yeah, he tried it, but it just wouldn't work on the outside of this turn. Rudd was a little bit low, but he just simply couldn't make the pass. And, Ned, I also noticed as Earnhardt went through turn seven last time, there was some smoke from the car, but wasn't it brake smoke? Yes, it was. Every time he has come in here, Bob, he has been locking one of the wheels coming in here. He comes in here at a high rate of speed, and he just simply locks the wheel, slides it, and that causes him to smoke. But he is all over Ricky Rudd here as they move up through turns two and three. Ernie Irvin, car number four, the defending champion of this race, is right behind Ricky Rudd. And Rudd has five road course wins in his career and one here at Sears Point back in 1989. Or maybe now Ricky Rudd is just simply trying to keep Ernie Irvin behind him. 
Yeah, Earnhardt is pulling away a little bit as we come into turn seven. He, again, we'll see if he smokes that wheel coming in there this time. Yeah, he did. He, the right front wheel is the one that is smoking when he comes in. He just locks that brake up. Here's Mark Martin trying to make a move on Jeff Bodine. He gets a run off the turn, but can't quite make it. Battle for second, battle for fourth. As Earnhardt leads. And Rusty Wallace has passed Wally Dolan back, so he moves up the position. And that wrist and those ribs don't seem to be bothering him. Boy, don't you know when he turns that car right and leans against that seat with that rib cage and it hurts, Bob? Oh, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. And there we see him going down in turn. There's a the cable cam right near where Benny is. We used this last Watkins plan last year. Wallace headed up now through turns number one and two, as you saw Ernie Irvin still trying to get by Ricky Rudd, and Mark Martin is still challenging for that position with Jeff Bodine. All this is Dale Earnhardt kind of sneaks away from everybody. He has a good rhythm going right now, Bob. You can see they have put some distance between he and Rudd. And as Benny said, though, Rudd having to fend off Ernie Irvin back there might be affecting him a little bit. Earnhardt out there just uh, cooling no traffic in front of him. It takes a long time to start lapping cars here at Sears Point because it takes them about a minute and 41 seconds to go around here. You're right, Ned. The cars are just now coming to you, and all the cars went by me 10, 15 seconds ago. Here they are in turn seven again. Mark Martin trying once again to move on the inside of Jeff Bodine. He gets the fender up there, but can't make it work. Wally Dollenbach losing a position here to Ken Schrader coming off this turn. Up through the S's. And you can see they're leaving in the car in the same year. Now the upshift to fourth gear to keep the car in third gear, but believe me, they're not running through their wide open, not with 700 horsepower. Now we see Mark Martin coming down in turn 11, straight towards me. As we're watching the field summary, Earnhardt, Rudd, Irving, Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin. These cars awfully close. Back in sixth is Wallace. P.J. Jones doing well in 11. has moved up to 25th. And Jimmy Spencer is going in the pits with an unscheduled pit stop to Monty Ford. John Kernan, what's going on down there? Jimmy Spencer brings in the Meineke Ford. What the problem is, the car is stuck in third gear. So the crew will crawl, jack it up. They will go underneath and try and fix the linkage. Apparently, the linkage is just a little bit bent down. They get him back out in the first gear. Jimmy is on his way. We'll check and see if they were able to get the problem solved. All right, Spencer moving back out onto the racetrack now. Having made an early pit stop that has dropped him to the rear of the field. Jimmy Spencer told me this morning had a good race car. I was looking forward to a top 10 finish here on the road course. And let's face it, Spencer's not known for his road racing experience. Expertise. Top five running together. Actually, uh, Earnhardt is a little bit ahead of two, three, four, and five. And then a little bit of racetrack back to the sixth position in Rusty Wallace. But there's Rudd, Urban, Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin. And again, we switch to the cable cam as it sweeps with the cars as they break down into corner number 11 where Benny is, and then we follow them coming out of the corner. There we see two, three, four, five. He's still in off turn 11 to the start of the finish line. There. From inside, from on top of Mark Martin's car. This is turn one. Up the hill. This is turn two going up the hill, still going up. Accelerating now over to turn three. There is three. Three A. Still going up the hill. Back to the right in turn four. Now we start down here. And this is turn five. We see a little bit of smoke out of Jeff on A little bit of kick. Five A. Over to turn six, or what is known as the carousel. And out of six, up to Nidger. 
to come out. This is a relatively long straightaway here compared to those that you were just describing, Dan. They have to turn left just a little bit coming into this turn. They take a wide groove coming in here. Expecting Earnhardt, he gets right down on the inside. You see, still see a little bit of smoke there out of his wheels as he comes in there and does the braking. And then they accelerate off of turn seven, down through the S's, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and then of course 11, going back down to where Benny will be. Dale Earnhardt continuing to lead this race. He took the lead at the drop of the green flag and has held it since. Rudd is second, followed by Urban, Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin. Well, you've been seeing the shots from the cable cam. There is the cable cam and what it looks like. It sweeps down to turn number 11 following the cars as they go through, and then it stops and follows the cars coming out of turn number 11 as it's doing right now. There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt. And here comes Rusty Wallace. Uh, there goes Earnhardt to start finish line, and Rusty Wallace, as he comes off the corner, a little bit of water coming out of the back of this, the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac, like he might be overeating just a tick. There comes Rusty, and you see he's falling back, uh, what is that, 50, 50, 100 car lengths. Yeah, he's running in sixth position. He's holding his position, but is dropping back from Mark Martin. The move is Dale Jarrett, who is now in 21st position after starting 32nd. Now, gentlemen, we see these rumble strips that are on almost every corner, and our qualification coverage that preceded us from Indianapolis talked extensively about the rumble strips that have been put there. How do they affect a car when they go over it, uh, Benny or Ned? Well, I think the, the car's going to leave the ground when they, some of these guys go and hit those rumble strips. They'll literally get the car, oh, we got to spin. Down in turn one, turn 11, I should say, Jeff Davis, remember the car that spun earlier up in turn uh, six? He, I think he and Jimmy Spencer got together down in 11 and around he went, but he did a 360 and away he goes. But anyway, a lot of these guys use the strips to make their car handle. They go in, hit the strip, and just kind of pitch the car sideways and then get back on the gas. Oh. And Bill Smith, Bill Smith in the tires, uh, looks like up in turn three or four someplace. One of the Winston West competitors is in the tires. And he's not going to be able to move that car. I'm sure this is going to bring a caution flag out to get him off those tires. Yeah, he's not too far off the racetrack. You can see other cars going by him there. As we see Earnhardt coming back off of turn 11. And the, yes, they are going to throw the caution flag this time. First overall caution of the race. As Bill Schmidt, who's a four-time NASCAR Winston West champion in 77, 79, 89, and 90, is in the tires. He finished 24th a year ago here at Sears Point, the only competitor to win three championships in three different decades. But the car is up on the tires. He doesn't appear to be injured, but it does bring out our first overall caution of the afternoon at Sears Point International Raceway. In the beautiful wine country of Northern California, Sears Point International Raceway in the Sabart Supermarket 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race and live coverage. We are under caution because of this incident involving Bill Schmidt. The car up on the tires, the wrecker has arrived. He appears to be okay, but it is slowing the field for the first time this afternoon. And now the question is, will they come in for a pit stop? Benny, they're right there. Uh, at you we'll see if they come in jerry how about the situation regarding rusty wallace is that car overheating well the crew was able to hear because they monitor our telecast like everyone else does they were able to hear what benny said and rusty said uh, that the water temperature is showing about 240 degrees they thought it might be fuel coming out of the car possibly fuel coming out the overflow because some of the reporters said there's some fuel coming out when he runs around the course but now rusty has decided to bring the car down pit road and take a look at the machine itself as he brings the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac in. The Penzo Pontiac and Mazda Waltrip coming in. A number of teams coming down pit road. They will change all four tires. Buddy Parrott and the crew going over to work on the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. Right side tires are already on, left side going on. Thus far they have not. They will make a chassis adjustment in the right rear and take a round to bite out of the right rear. Left side tires are on. And Thus far, no one has looked inside to check the water gauge. 22.7, and now as he leaves, there is some dampness on pit road, but it looks to be fuel from the overflow area. 
All right, we'll continue to keep our eye on that. Rusty, of course, losing a lot of track position because of that unscheduled pit stop. An update now on time trials at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's go to Dave Despain. Thank you very much, Bob. The wild ride for Bill Schmidt uh, gives us an opportunity to show you a wild ride here at the Speedway. John Paul Jr. has just fun as you uh, take a look at John Paul, a man who's had a rather checkered racing career, a man that many thought was going to be one of the superstars of this sport, and here's how it happened. The treacherous turns here at Indy. You see the little bit of a wiggle between turn one and turn two in the short shoot. The car looping but hitting absolutely nothing and then coming to a stop. The proverbial great piece of driving, perhaps. Watch very closely and you'll see how the car twitches right there the back end breaks loose, and he is in a great deal of danger at that moment. But fortunately, he was far enough off the corner that the car was headed straight up track. It spun, smoking the tires, but otherwise not doing a great deal of damage. John Paul Jr. is still attempting to make the field here for this 77th running of the 500. Jeff Andretti qualified earlier today, the first man to make the show. Bobby and Fox joining him on row six. Lynn St. James, Tony Bettenhausen, and Al Unzer. That's Al Sr., of course, will make row seven. And Bobby Rahal, the reigning IndyCar champ, will be in row eight. We'll be here all day, Bob, to stay on top of it. Let's go back to California. Thanks for the update, guys, and a great job of driving by John Paul Jr. as he uh, kept the car off the wall. An update on Rusty from Jerry. Well, Rusty pitted a moment ago. They saw no water coming out of the cars that sat here on pit road. Buddy Parrott and the crew were looking beneath the car. However, Rusty has called in and said the water gauge is going, as I quote Rusty, it's going nuts in here, guys. The little needle's going back and forth, back and forth. So either the thing is completely out of water, as Buddy Parrott said, or probably, and more likely, they hope, the gauge is bad. So Rusty right now is still on the racetrack. They have not seen any more water come out of the car. Trying to put support that protect an 80 point lead over Dale Earnhardt going into this race here at Sears Point. Here's the cable cam once again as they're headed for turn number 11 and hopefully the green flag in just a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds I should say. It won't be long. We saw the guys weaving their cars back and forth trying to clean the debris, the sand off their tires. So when they nail the throttle at 700 horsepower we'll be able to hook up to the racetrack and carry them forward. Elmo Langley gets going in the pace car, drives away and pretty soon, Bob, it's going to be green. And it is right now. What Elmo does is drive straight. He continues on the drag strip and allows the cars to make the left corner into turn number one. We are back under green. It's Earnhardt, Rudd, Irvin, Bodine, Martin, Allison, and Ken Schrader as the others come up through the corners. Everybody single file up the hill. Here's Rudd. Dick Trickle there in turn number four. Tom Kendall has also moved up several positions. There he is in the family channel machine. He started in 33rd. He's now up to 20th. We'll ride with him. on that straightaway leading to corner number seven in the position that Ned is in. And he follows the car number 55 of Ted Musgrave through the turn. See him shifting the gear there as he came off the turn. you know that he wants to do as well as he can and race as hard as he can but what is his attitude do you think gentlemen regarding uh, getting this chance here on the road course well i, I think that uh, he really wanted to do well but i think that after he had on friday put him in a, in a decided disadvantage right now he needs to finish the race and finish it with this race car because they need to go to Watkins Glen in a couple of months and they need this race car here's the racetrack where as we go with Tommy Kendall by the start finish line into turn one. We start up the hill. He will go back to the right. This is one. He will go back to the right in turn two. Across a very short straightaway, and he will turn left in turn three. There's three. Right back to the right in three A. Starts back downhill now to turn four. 
First turn four, he's going around to the right. Now there's a little bit of a kick to the right. This is downhill all the way. And now the car goes up the hill to turn six. As he goes down to the carousel, turn six, he accelerates off and is heading toward Ned Jarrett. He's running about the middle of the pack. Bob mentioned him was running in the position, and that is about the middle of the pack now. As he comes into turn seven, still following Ted Musgrave. Brake hard now. He moves up on the outside of Musgrave, trying to make a pass. Now on the inside, I should say, and he does indeed make the pass. And he heads on now into turn number seven, which is a left-hander. Then back to the right in eight. Then another right. And then a left-hander into ten. A little bit of a straightaway before he comes into your position. He's not quite there yet, Benny, but he's heading that way. Well, that's where he had the problem last Friday, right in there. Now he gets through there and is down in turn 11. Down shift the second gear into the corner, off the brakes now, and accelerates off turn 11 back towards Bob Jenkins. And there is one lap with Tom Kendall and the family channel and Ford around Sears Point International Raceway. By the way, this is just a one-race sponsorship program the family channel has on this car. As we show you what's happening up front, Earnhardt still the leader. There is second and third place. Ricky Rudd, Ernie Urban, Jeff Bodine, Mark Martin, Davey Allison, Ken Schrader, Terry Labonte, Daryl Waltrip, Wally Dollenbach. And others. And others, yeah. And here is Jerry with another update on Rusty. We're with David Evans, the engine builder for the Miller Genuine Draft Team. And David, a lot of discussions going on. I see you brought out the liquid glass here and have it standing by. What do you plan to do? Well, he called in and said that water temperature gauge was pegged. And uh, he thought he was out of water. So we came in and changed four tires and it wasn't pushing any water out of the overflow. So we think we might have a bad gauge. But if it is pushing water out, we'll have to come in and cool it down. Like for a qualifying run to get the water to stay in and put this liquid glass in it. Because we don't have a quick fill on this radiator. There's no quick fill on the car, so you're going to have to come in and take the radiator hose off and then fill it into the block directly. That's right. That's right. Cool it down like we were if we were going to qualify. And that would take a lot of time here on pit road and cost uh, Rusty Wallace a lot of points. David Evans, the engine builder. Rusty is picking him off, though, just past John Krebs. Now he's right behind Ted Musgrave as once again we go to the cable cam. The car is moving through corner number 11. There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt, looking for his first win ever on a road course. And right behind, Jeff Bodine has passed Ernie Irvin for that third spot. It wasn't long ago that Irvin was up there challenging Ricky Rudd, but now he seems to drop back a little bit. Third, fourth, and fifth running very close together. Bodine, Irvin, and Martin. Ernie's got some kind of problem, Ned. Yeah, he's not up to the pace he was. Now he moves over Mark Martin going back. He just moved over and gave Mark room. Urban, loses, pass. Urban loses two positions here and a half a lap. Maybe overheating a little bit. Or That's what I was thinking. Problem? I don't know. That's what I was thinking about overheating it, and he's just decided to take it a little bit and not turn the engine. 8,800, 8,900, how many of RPMs they turn on the shift. I mean, these guys are turning these engines slam out of the frame. Here's another Fram field summary showing you that Ernie has dropped back to fifth. And the 42 car of Kyle Petty has moved up nicely to 13th position, and he started 18th in the mellow yellow Pontiac. He won, of course, last year at Watkins Glen in the rain, in the rain short event. Yeah, remember he told John Turner he wasn't going to take his word for it. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he wanted to hire authority. Yeah. That's right. And Dunn. Jeff Bodine down at turn 11 and under Ricky Rudd for second place. Here they come Look out of here. corner 11 onto the straightaway. They're side by side as they come toward the start finish line. Now let's see who gets the position in turn one. And Bodine is going to do it. Wow. But you know, Jeff Bodine needs the money because he bought the 17 this week for I don't know how many million dollars. So I know that's going to make him very aggressive. He needs the money desperately. Riding with Mark Martin, and yeah, he has bought that team, and they will keep Jimmy Hensley and Tom Kendall in the car for the rest of this year. We're riding with Mark Martin, and now he tries to make a bid 
from Ricky Rudd, and he will do it. Jeff Bodine to second, Mark Martin to third, and Rudd back to fourth. So the positions are changing up front, except that Dale Earnhardt continues to lead the St. Mark Supermarket 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Sears Point. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Sears Point for the Save Mark Supermarket 300. Here's the interval leaderboard showing you that Jeff Bodine is about a second and a half behind the leader, Earnhardt. Rudd is two seconds behind, Martin two and a half, and Ernie Irvin, who was running in second position, is back to four seconds out of the lead in fifth position. Now, Jerry has a report on Ernie Irvin and why he's been losing positions recently. I asked Tony Glover and the crews here in the Kodak team if they had a problem with the car, overheating, the car not handling as well as it was. They said, no, the car seemed to be handling real well. I got to believe that Ernie is cooling his jets early. When I was in their truck this morning, they were calculating fuel miles. Most of the teams wanted to go around 25 laps to be able to make this race on two fuel stops. When they calculated their fuel mileage, no matter how you did it, with an ink pen, pencil, or calculator, it was very, very close that they could make it 25 laps. In fact, Brunt Bentley just told me a minute ago, unless we cool it, we may not make it 25 laps to be able to make it on two stops. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, Jerry, we see, we've seen some problems. Jimmy Spencer having a problem with his transmission early. They've gotten that pretty much taken care of. But for Bobby Hillen Jr., they are sitting on pit road. The car is up on jack stand. They have suffered a broken drive shaft. So a tough break for the Highland Myers Ford. And now we have a new leader as Jeff Bodine has passed Dale Earnhardt. And Bodine comes to the lead. And Mark Martin now knocking on Jarrett's rear spoiler for second spot. That's the other Dale, Bob. That's Earnhardt, oh, Bob. Oh, sorry. And the black number three. I gotcha. It's normally Dale Earnhardt driving it is this weekend. It's been two weeks, and so uh, I've forgotten everything that I've learned. Earnhardt second. <laughs> and Mark Martin, as you say, is knocking on his door as they go into the carousel. I don't know if Earnhardt's car might be getting a little bit loose, or the handle has gone away a little bit, or not. Certainly, everybody else is. Or, or several of them at least have been working on him. Here's Mark Martin now trying to move on the inside of him, coming into turn seven, and he does. He's going to make the pass. Martin has been very strong coming off this turn, but they go into number eight side by side. Who will get the advantage as they hit down through there? Earnhardt. Yep. Dale held off the challenge of Martin. He maintains second spot. You know, it's a strange thing to me, Ned, that the Chevrolets took off three Chevrolets and two Fords. Now the Ford is coming to the front. I don't know if it's a brand thing or just team thing. I don't know. Interesting, so the way it's working. As we mentioned, and now let's see if Mark Martin can take second from Earnhardt. Yes, he does. Mark Martin goes to second. As we mentioned, Jeff Bodine has purchased the Allen Kowicki team. There were many bidders for this team. So earlier in the weekend, we asked Felix Zavadas, the administrator of Allen's estate, why it was sold to Jeff Bodine. Well, the main reason he chose Bodine, he wanted the same to say with the race driver, like Allen was. And he felt that by putting Bodine, or selling Bodine the team, that Bodine would continue the same thing that Allen did. And it worked out good for everybody that way. But after talking with the fellows that are in that number seven team, it was quite obvious they're dedicated, they're loyal. They were very loyal to Allen. And that's the kind of loyalty I want with my people. And really, they're the ones, those fellas, those 14 or 15, 16 people that make up that number seven team are the reason Andy and I were interested in purchasing, purchasing the team. You can buy trucks, you can buy cars, you can buy all these parts, tools. You know, they're dying, they're just out there. Anyone can purchase those things. But to get the right people to make up this team is a hard part of auto racing. It's a hard part of any business. I could see they were the right people, and we pursued the, the deal, and we're very happy we got it. Officially, GEB Inc., of which Jeff Bodine is the president, now the owner of what was Alan Kowicki Racing. And we jump now inside the number seven car, which is driven here today by Tom Kendall. Tom is in 19th position. And he's watching a battle up in front of him. Michael Walker just moved around Brent Bodine to take 
take over the 17th position and Bobby Labonte has fun here and he's trying to back up and get going again. In fact, he does get going. Almost backed out in front of Hutch Strickland, but he gets going and everything's okay. And there you see the serial on Tom starting 33rd, then to 27th, 24th, 20th. And with 17 laps completed, he is in the top 20 at 19. Downshifting now for turn 11. Here he's going through the corner right now. And he's showing off 11 and back to Jeff Bodine. I'll tell you what, Mark Martin is gaining on him. Oh, here's a pass. Uh oh, maybe. Oh, oh and Martin spins. I think he ran up on Jeff a lot quicker than he thought he was going to be able to. If we look out the windshield of Mark Martin's car, another car carrying a camera for it. Now he gets it right. He's headed in the right direction. Lost a lot of positions there, though. Did. Terry Labonte was the last to get by him before Martin got the thing straight and back on the accelerator. So Mark Martin in an effort to take the lead away. Now he's still having trouble. He's looks all like over the track. Looks like he's got a flat tire or something, maybe. Well, he got some debris on his tires when he's spun up there, but he's had all kinds of problems. Ned coming towards you. Yeah, he's coming in here. He's still coming in at a pretty good rate of speed. Rusty Wallace has caught him right now. Rusty has really made a move back up through the pack. Mark really slows down coming into this turn. We don't, it's hard to tell if there's a tire down. He gets off of there pretty good, but Rusty is really going on after him down through the S's. Uh, Rusty Wallace, if he stopped on that caution flag and checked the thing to see if it's overheating and changed tires, he has been a rocket ship going through this field of cars. And Jerry Punch has an update from the pit area. Steve Mill just asked Mark Martin if he had a flat tire, and Mark said no. It's just really bouncing around. They run a lot of low air pressure here that really low, lower the air pressure on these cars to get them to handle up to the, the road course, but it looks flat from here. In fact, it's hard for the crew to even go. So I had to ask him, and Mark said no, it, it's fine. Position now, Mark Martin slipping from second to ninth. Wallace is in tenth. Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty, both of whom have made great runs to the front from their starting position. And John Kernan has a report on the Kyle Petty run. Bob, you know how most of these teams prepare a road specific car for the road courses. Well, Kyle Petty is driving his Martinsville North Wilkesboro car here today. Robin Timberson told me that this race track is unlike Watkins Glen because it's kind of 50-50 left and right. So they just made some suspension changes and brought their Martinsville, their short track car here. And it appears to be doing the trick for them this afternoon. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Back Look. when I was running road courses, Bob, that's what we did. And here's Jimmy Spencer spinning around in the headed again. Everything's okay. Caution in that corner, but that doesn't mean that it's caution all around the track. Well, we'll see what happens. He comes up on Jeff Gordon and maybe has to hit the brakes going into that turn, and the back end just gets around, and he can never get it back. But I started to say back when I was driving race cars and and running on road courses. We only had Riverside at that time and Bridgehampton, New York. And that's what we did. We took a short track car because we only had three race cars, a dirt track car and a short track car and a big track car. So we took the short track cars at the road course. <laughs> By the way, up there where Jimmy Spencer spun, the guy that was in front of him, Jeff Gordon, also spun in that section of the racetrack just a lap before that. Now here's Davey Allison and Ken Schrader running right together on the racetrack. We will keep an eye on this battle as we take another break in our live coverage of the St. Martin Supermarket 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race from the beautiful Valley of the Moon in California. The top five separated by 6.97 seconds, 3.29 between first and second. Rudd is four seconds behind Irvin, about four and a half, five and a half, and Davy Allison almost seven seconds behind. Our next Speed World presentation of NASCAR Winston Cup Racing will be on Sunday afternoon, June 13th at 12.30 Eastern Time. The Champion Spark Plug 500 live from Pocono International Raceway in Pennsylvania. That's Sunday afternoon, June the 13th. There's the leader, Jeff Bodine. The Motorcraft Ford uh, doing a nice job. 
holding yes. off the challenges of Dale Earnhardt and others, Ned. Yeah, the car seems to be handling very well, Bob. He goes through the turn seven here in real good shape and uh, just very smooth. Jeff Bodine is a good road racer. Well, he has won victory in road course competition. That came back in 1984 at Riverside. Earnhardt, though, has never won. Rudd has, so has Irvin. But here is a guy who has really performed well in the first few laps of this race. He is up in seventh position. That, of course, is Darrell Waltrip. He started 13th. And look at him trying to get under Davey Allison. And Allison was trying to be passed by Kenny Schrader. It's a great race back there. There comes Martin and uh, Rusty Walsh right behind these guys. Jerry really impressed with uh, Darrell Waltrip's performance so far. Guys, Barry Dawson and the crew were really feeling good about their chances today. They've had one of the few three-link chassis in the field. They say the three-link chassis prohibits the car from doing the wheel hop. They're able to adjust the rear chassis with the short trailing arm and the direct link to the rear end housing that'll minimize the hopping of the rear end when they go into the brakes. And that's why they figured DW would be able to make his way at his own pace toward the front. Waltrip has five road course wins in his career, all of them coming at Riverside. He has never won here or at Watkins Glen, but he has five victories at Riverside. The most recent was in 1986. His best performance here was an eighth. And he breaks going into turn seven. Tries to get on the inside of Ken Schrader. He got a nose under there, Bob, but couldn't quite make the pass. Didn't get the run off the corner that he normally gets off of here. He was a little bit loose coming off of that turn. And he can see that Rusty Wallace is still working on Mark Martin. was never able to get around him. Of course, Mark was running in second trying to take the lead before he had the problem. Pit stops coming up, guys. Yeah, Ernie Irvin is headed towards the pits. Jerry punches right there as Ernie comes in. And the speed is 35 miles per hour. They said 3,000 RPM in second gear. And Ernie Irvin heads the Kodak Chevrolet, the defending champion of the same Mark 300, and a California native from Salinas, California. Irvin will bring the car down a scheduled pit stop. The crew now going to work on the Irvin machine. They will change all four tires, and here again, it is very critical to get the car completely full of fuel. Earning very close on fuel to make it on two pit stops, barring any caution flag. Left side tires going on, and they have completed the left side tires. Let's check in at the Kyle Petty pit. a little bit loose though but they did was drop the air pressure in both rear tires dorsey schrader is also in he will also be in here for a four tire change this is neat our broadcast position is right above the pit area normally i don't get to see pit stops like i saw ernie urban that was really something i it's it's hard to believe how guys how those guys are coordinated on their pit and stops. look at there daryl walker going by schrader mark martin going by now rusty wallace has schrader got a problem or what Lost three spots in uh, that corner turn he did. Yes, he did. He slipped a little bit. In fact, the car is going to be loose coming off of this corner, Benny, and I think he just broke traction there, and, and they all took advantage of it. Jeff Bodine, the leader, is coming in the pit. Our leader is heading towards the pit road, and Ar Arnhardt's coming in. Rudd's coming in. I can't even talk. Maybe else. All of them's coming in, except Rusty Wallace, who stopped earlier. And this might give Rusty a chance to lead a lap and get five bonus points, which is very important now, as close as the points are. Meanwhile, those that were on the track are now in the pit area, going slowly toward their assigned pit area. Earnhardt has stopped. Bodine just about to. Here's Jerry. 43-year-old Jeff Bodine has the motor craft board getting service. And what a job they have done in the last few weeks. Harold Stott, 55 years of age, changing the right rear tire. has been tire changing for 20 years. Now, that right side tires are on. They come around, take the left side off. Car being completely fueled. Our leader, our early leader. Dale Earnhardt now is out. He comes coming down pit road here in Bodine. Off the jacket, Earnhardt will be the first among the leaders. Clean pit road, Bodine next. And as they go back out onto the racetrack, 
Rusty Wallace did get credit for leading that lap, so five bonus points to him. And he'll be able to stay out for a while, Bob, because he he stopped during that last caution, so he has enough fuel to go for a good while. He's just out there running by himself, no one even close to him in front of him or behind him. So the first series of pit stops have been completed here at Spears Point, the uh, first scheduled series of stops. Rusty Wallace has the lead because he did it earlier. And we pick him up on the cable game, and he's, he's coming in. Man, oh man, I didn't believe he would, I thought he would stay out, but he's coming in. This must, is this a schedule pit stop, guys? Well, I don't know. He did what he wanted to do, of course, and lead and let a lap to get the five points, but I'm a little surprised he's in. Jerry, here he comes. And the crew is telling me it is a schedule stop. They want to try to stay on their fuel schedule. So Rusty now on pit road as they are trying to change all four tires. Apparently they have figured out that it is not an overheating problem. They have simply have a bad water temperature gauge. Left side tire now going on. Winston Cup point leader. Wallace revs the engine up, has it in gear, he's down and away. 17.9 seconds. Good pit work. As he pulls out of the pit area, the leader at the moment is Michael Waldrop. He has not stopped, but will have to stop very shortly. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Hi, this is Jan Beekens at the International motorsports and we have here the Goodyear speed gun and in fact we've been checking the track temperature here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and what's happened is now reached its peak so what's happening is that now the speeds are going to be coming up the cars will be rolling out just like at four o'clock that we had here yesterday that's when the speeds came up the track temperature came down we're looking for action here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Jan, thank you very much for the update from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Here at Sears Point, we've completed 27 laps, and Michael Waltrip is the leader, Sterling Marlin second, Rick Wilson third, followed by Hutt Strickland and Phil Parsons, but those drivers have not pitted recently. I think they all did pit during that uh, first caution, which yep. was at about lap 10, Bob, so they should yep. be able to go a few more laps, and we speculated why Rusty Wallace might come in he, when he pitted at the same time as these drivers we were just talking about. I think he came in so that if a caution came out, he wouldn't have to make a pit stop then and have to go to the tail end of the line. He had moved himself back up in the top 10 by making a green flag pit stop, which he made a good one, just a little over 17 seconds. He brought back up there with the leader. So if the caution comes out now, you know, he's not hurt by it. Good strategy for Rusty Wallace, and Michael Waltrip has made a nice progression. Starting 16th, he fell back to 31st, and now has the lead. But again, remember, he made a pit stop on lap number 10, and will be needing another pit stop before too long. Sterling Marlin is right there with him in turn 11. And when Michael Waltrip made that pit stop and came on back on the racetrack right behind Rusty Wallace, hey guys, he almost stayed up with Rusty Wallace for that 20 laps or 18 laps, whatever it was. This Penzo Pontiac was good. First and second, we will tell you that Morgan Shepard was assessed as stop and go penalty for being too fast on pit road. And we're riding with Morgan right now, actually on top of the Sitco Ford. This is the straightaway from turn number six down to turn seven and the suspension cam. And coming into seven, you can see that uh, a little action there on the screen as it goes through the turn. Accelerates off and heads through the S's now. We'll see a little bit of a change now as it goes through the first left-hand turn, then the right-hand turn. As you can see, it gets a pretty good workout. The screen and the shock absorber gets a pretty good workout on the road course. In fact, more of a workout here than anywhere. Okay. And that's the rear. That is the rear suspension we're looking at. Right at the bottom right-hand lower part of your screen is the rear end cooler pump. That pumps the fluid out of the rear end, out of the grease, the gear into a cooler and back in and cools the grease. That's the oil tank that we see. It says Sitco on it. I think that's the oil reservoir for this board. Is that Sitco sticker always on there, or was that just for the uh, suspension cam, you suppose? I think it was for the camera's <laughs> sake. 
now back on top of the car as he moves through turns number one and two. Here is Michael Waltrip continuing to lead and Sterling Marlin. And Sterling Marlin, remember, he made a pit stop on the parade lap, had to go to the very end of the pack. There's the Ricky Rudd and, and uh, Rusty Wallace going in turn 11. That's like I said, the outbreak Wallace oh! the Rudd, but he goes in too deep, and Rudd comes back, and now we've got a drag race back to Bob Jenkins. Let's see who comes out of the drag race in front as they head to turn one. It looks like it's going to be Rusty. It is. Well, I was going to say Rusty took Ricky to school on outbreaking him, but then when he took the uh, high road coming off the corner, Rudd had a chance to get back alongside, but Rusty has the spot. Yes, he is. We have an unusually low attrition rate at this time. Officially, no cars out of the race. All 43 are still in the going. Oh, and now here's Michael Marlin trying to, Sterling Marlin trying to take the lead. A little smoke coming from Michael's car. I don't know if it was just brake smoke as he came in there. But Sterling Marlin does have the lead now. He wants to get five bonus points. The Rebestus Ford is in the lead. Remember, he started from last, just like Ernie Urban last year, driving from last to first. I thought Michael Waldrop had blown up up there, Ned, but that must have been great. Yeah, I think oh. he just lost the brakes coming in here. Danny. We see a lot of them are doing that today, more than I've seen in a while. They, they're coming in here at such a hot rate of speed, and they just ready to get on those brakes, and then when they make the turn, well, then it locks that wheel, takes the weight off of that right front wheel. We got a little sideways coming out of the corner, John Curtis. Well, guys, it's kind of amazing. Sterling's running as well as he is. He pitted on one of the parade laps because they were having a problem with the axle. Now, Ken Wilson, I'd ask him about uh, what the problem was. He said, well, we were having kind of a problem with the axle. He wouldn't be very specific, but the way he talked about it was like they weren't able to fix the problem. So I'm telling you what, that car's running really well. And it's kind of unexpectedly so. Guys, I see more than tire smoke out of that Waltrip car, don't you? Yes, I do. He was smoking out of the rear of the car on the accelerator, so he's got some problems with the pins off on him. Hanging in there in second position, though, as Sterling Marlin has the lead here in the Raybestos Ford. But when these guys do stop, now all the fellas that stopped earlier are going to go back in front of them, so Sterling Marlin and Michael Waltrip will go from first and second to... Uh, probably 22nd, 23rd. And they're not too far, Benny, perhaps uh, six or seven seconds in front of Dale Earnhardt, who is now running in third place. And will be the leader of the race when Marlin and Walter Pitt. And by the way, Sterling Marlin's best finish of 1993, a ninth at Daytona and North Wilkesboro. Started 23rd, currently the leader. His lowest was 38th on the second lap. He comes through turn 10 and heads toward turn 11. And once again, he and Michael Walton stay on the racetrack, continue to lead this race. Sterling Marlin, 15 starts on road courses, five top 10 finishes, and the 75 car of Dick Trickle has spun in turn number 11, but he gets things straightened out. Trickle and Dale Earnhardt got together coming down in turn 11. Just like I said, Trickle did not realize Earnhardt was trying to outbreak him. To cut across in front of Earnhardt's car. Earnhardt bumped him in the rear and went around. I didn't see any damage to Dale Earnhardt's car, but Trickle made a 360. There is Earnhardt. And we'll show you the replay of that incident out in turn 11. There it is, Benny. Yeah, exactly like I said, Rick Trickle did not realize Earnhardt was trying to outbreak him. Cuts across, hits the left front fender on Earnhardt's car with his rear, and around he goes. He puts the car in first gear, though, unfortunately drives away. Both Urban and Wallace able to pass by without any further incident. We're live at Sears Point International Raceway in California for the Save Mart, Save Mart Supermarket 300. Back 
live at Sears Point International Raceway, about an hour north of San Francisco in the St. Martin Supermarket 300. Michael Waltrip has the lead. Sterling Marlin made a pit stop. So Waltrip hangs on to the lead, but Dale Earnhardt is just a few car lengths behind. Ha, I love that, but... <laughs> we, we can all see that black car back there and realize that Earnhardt is coming. Also, Ernie Irvin and Rusty Wallace. So Michael enjoy it because it's not going to last very long. And from the looks of that car, his race isn't going to last very long because I continue to see smoke coming from that thing, not only in the corners, but when he's accelerating. Yeah. That time he locked up the brakes and smoked the right front tire coming down in turn 11, but we can see that Earnhardt is just a few car lengths behind Michael Waltrip as Bobby Hillen goes back on the racetrack. He's been in the pits for a long, long time. The gauges on the 30 car aren't showing anything, aren't showing any malfunction that would cause this smoke that we see coming out of the rear end of the car at times. But in any case, he's just about to lose the lead. And I think probably, Ned, it will happen before they get to you. Here they come up the hill for turns four, five, and then down to six. Yeah, Earnhardt's not going to wait long to, no. to move around. He has a much faster race car. Michael knows that. He's going to a little bit of running room here. Earnhardt moves to the inside, makes the pass, so Michael gets back to the second position. And we'll watch Michael as he comes into this turn. Earnhardt has the lead. Now, Earnhardt's been smoking that right front tire, but look at the smoke that comes out of Michael Walter's car coming into this turn. Boy, it is really, and I think it is, Bob, more than tire smoke as he comes in there, even smoking when he's coming off the turn now. Michael Waltrip's best road course finish was here at Sears Point, a ninth. going by Dave Marcus down the back straightaway and here's our infrared cam at turn number 10 gives you a pretty good idea of how the uh, brakes are heated up on that car and the heat underneath each of the cars as they pass by and Ernie Irvin is going by Michael Walter for second place oh and Rusty Wallace started to go by but Michael came down Rusty had to back up Wow. All right, John Kernan, what's the situation with Michael Waltrip? Well, Bob, they're going to bring him in the next time by what they think the problem is. The rear end might be burning up. They think the smoke is coming from the rear end. Michael has radioed in and said the smoke is coming into the race car. The crew is now getting ready. It will be a four-tire change. They will also get underneath the car, check it out, and see if the problem is, in fact, the rear end, and then they will uh, solve it from there if they can. He continues to lose positions. Ernie Irvin is in second position. Rusty Wallace is third. Waltrip fourth, but Bodine now takes that position away. So it's Jeff fourth, Michael back to fifth, and then Ricky Rudd. And a spin, Dick Trickle. Dick Trickle's off the track uh, someplace up in 3, 3A three somewhere. Boy, he's been having a tough afternoon. 39 cars, whoop, make that uh, 35 cars are on the lead lap. You're kidding. Pretty amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. <laughs> right. And there's the number one car on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt, the Goodrich Chevrolet. But I saw Jeff Bodine back there a moment ago in the motorcraft Ford. So it looks like that he's coming back into contention. Just a great panoramic view of this road course in what has to be one of the most beautiful sections of the United States. There Earnhardt is, right? I could waste those people, couldn't I, Bob? Well, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> see. Here, Here comes yeah. Michael Walter in the pit. And Royal Pontiac is on pit road. And John Kernan will call this pit stop and the crew's assessment of the problem. Michael Walter was looking for a very good run. Remember a few years ago when he tumbled and tumbled, tumbled and tore up the car. They had to put it together with gaffer's tape. Now they will go to work. It will be a four-tire change. They'll look underneath the car. Also, we expect him to go underneath the hood to check and see if there's an oil leak underneath. But first things first, right side tires on. Second can of gasoline going in. Left side will come off. Left side now going on. There's not a whole lot of smoke that we see. 
down here. But down here is Paul Nelson, Michael away. Perhaps they'll wait for a caution and check and see. 20.5 seconds to see under the hood if he does have an oil leak. And their NASCAR officials are now looking in the pit road area, and we do not see any oil leaking down the oil that would have leaked out onto pit road. No, he looks pretty dry. So he gets back out on the racetrack as Dale Earnhardt has the lead now, again. Here comes Dale Earnhardt, second, Ernie Urban. That's Rick Mass, Jeff Bonine and Rusty Wallace go by Rick Mass. Ricky Rudd, there's Bill Smith's car, one of the uh, Mark Martin's coming through. There's uh, Dave Marcus, Davey Allison. Here comes Kyle Petty and Kenny Swift and Dale Jarrett. Terry Labonte scoring in for all the Kellogg's Corn Flakes Chevrolet. And Darrell Waltrip in his neck. Here comes Bill Elliott. He's shown in 15th position. Dick Trickle and Sterling Marlin. Sterling ended up after making his pit stop. Michael should be coming here pretty soon. There's Michael Walter. He's just now going out of turn seven, Benny. And there's the family Channel 4, driven by Tom Kendall. He is up to 16th position. A very talented road racer. Now coming up. On Wally Dolan back in turn 11 to the Keystone Ford. He did get him next lap up. <laughs> we'll keep you updated on Tom Kendall's position as we take another break with Dale Earnhardt leading Ernie Urban, Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, and Ricky Rudd. coverage of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 from Sears Point International Raceway in Northern California. And tonight, here on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, Giants outfielder Bobby Bonds having a spectacular year. He'll be battling it out with Tony Gwynn and the other San Diego Padres as the Giants take on the Padres from San Diego, 8 o'clock tonight, ESPN's Sunday Night Baseball. I thought if they were playing here in San Francisco, we'd go down and cover that game, Bob. Exactly what I had in mind, Benny, but uh, San Diego's a little far to travel, as yes, we know. Is. Here's Dale Earnhardt. He leads this race as we have reached the halfway point. Has about a, what, five, six car length advantage on uh, Ernie Irvin, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, looks like it. Was he the leader at the halfway point? I Dale believe so. Okay. And uh, by the way, he will be uh, going for the Unical bonus money today of $30,400. He was the pole sitter, and if he can win the race, Earnhardt will pick up that much in Unical bonus money. There he comes down in turn six to Carousel. There comes our second place car, Ernie Erdin. And there's Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd. Bobby Hill and Mark Martin. Bill John Smith. Chris there right uh, in front of Mark Martin. Was it? Yeah. Uh, his car painted somewhere to Bobby Hill. Bobby Hill. In fact, John spun out the last time he came through turn seven here. There's Dale Jarrett, Ken think, Schrader. He just got past Ken Schrader just about a half a lap ago. There goes Terry Labonte in the Kellogg's Corn Lakes car. Jarrett's looking pretty good, Ned. Yeah, he's running good. Uh, Lost a little bit on his pit stop there. He moved up into the top eight. Now he's back to ninth position. Terry Labonte having a good run, even with those sore ribs here in the Kellogg's Cornflex car. Man, he nailed that wall at Talladega last couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. hit it almost head on. Yeah, he's the back of somebody here. Yeah. Looks like a truck he ran out of the back of it. Looks more like it was 
Martinsville a few weeks ago when he ran so well over there. And he said, now I got her ready to race, boys, once you guys are banged up. That might be an aerodynamic trick there, Nick. You know, I, I, I contend that he runs into somebody and pushes up that front end every week so that Kellogg's park legs is easier to read. Oh, I okay. <laughs> Makes sense. I think Gary Nelson wouldn't let him do inspection if they brought him to the track that way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Terry the Bonnie started 10th. At the end of 20 laps, he was 8th, 18th, 12th, and now 11th. Pitting, of course, dropping back some positions, but now making his way toward the front once again. Terry is a good road racer, too. Always has been since they started. Since he started running road races in Western Cup racing. Dale Earnhardt has led 20 of the first 37 laps. 31 cars are still on the lead lap. Five leaders, six lead changes, one overall caution for just two laps, and the average speed is 83.90 miles an hour in our Western Auto Race Summary. Five drivers have picked up five bonus points for leading a lap besides Earnhardt, Jeff Bodine, Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, and Rusty Wallace. Only one car, and that 65-year-old Herschel McGriff dropped out of competition. McGriff, by the way, is the leader of the Winston West standings going into this event. Now the Mechanic of the Year standings from Western Auto. Andy Petrie from Dale Earnhardt's crew is on top with 554 points. Mark Perry from Rusty Wallace. Tony Glover for Ernie Irvin is third. Steve Meal for Mark Martin fourth. And Donnie Wingo from Jeff Bodine is in fifth position. Tommy Kendall has caught Derek Cope up there, and he's underneath him, right down on the inside, coming off this turn. But Tommy's been having trouble getting traction off this turn, and he did then. Now Harry Gant's going to try to make a move on him, but can't quite do it. But Tommy had him passed, but he just couldn't get the traction he needed coming off the turn. Yeah, Kendall was very slow coming off that corner. Now noticing coming off this turn, Bobby, just simply the car's not hooked up for him. Hmm. They come down through the S's head toward Benny, and uh, Gant is still trying to get the spot away from Tommy. He may go to the inside here, Benny. He's trying to outbreak him. He goes in the corner, and he gets it done. Kendall goes up the hill. Now, Tommy was going to try to go back on the inside. Uh, no. Look, Kendall is drag racing back to you, Bob. <laughs> he sure is. They come to the line, and there was about a fender separation between the two, as Kendall had the position over Harry Gant. And they continue to battle side by side as they come up the hill to turn one and two, and Gant got him back. But what Kendall's going to go back on the inside of Gant. Whoa! You can't do that on road racing, can't you? Look at that. Oh, Gant hops off of the uh, ripple strip, gets the other one, and moves on the way. Well, I'm glad we finally found a battle. There wasn't much going on up front, but there sure is back here. I tell you, that's a good one, too, or was. It's for 16th position. You know, Gant started pretty far back in this field, too. Plus back about the 35th. 35th position. Yep. So he's made a pretty good move up here. Now we see Kendall downshift the second here. Fires him up on the outside. Runs in there, gets the fender alongside him. But that doesn't quite work either. Gant pulls him off the turn. A little bit better traction than Tommy once again. Kendall just can't get the traction he needs off this turn. Tom Kendall, of course, very severely injured in an IMSA crash at Watkins Glen a few years ago, has been trying ever since then to get back after very bad feet and leg injuries. One time he was mentioned as the replacement for Richard Petty when he retired. That, of course, went to Rick Wilson. I believe he tested Richard's car up at North Wolfboro last fall. Yep. Started 33rd, currently running 17th. He's been as high as 15th, and he's been as low as 33rd when this race began. He has not led a lap. Tom Kendall from La Canada, California. Well, when you were talking about that, Mark Martin asked Rusty Wallace. Started 35th, currently running 18th. That's the highest that he has been. And his lowest has been his starting position of 35th also.
There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt, leading Ernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, and Mark Martin with 41 out of 74 laps completed at Sears Point. ESPN Speed World is brought to you by Allied Signals Autolite Spark Plugs. Guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. Mart 300, led by Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin running in second position. Between them is Dick Trickle in car number 75. We might mention that there were five drivers who came here and did not make the race. Tony Hunt, Wayne Jack, Jack Zeller, Scott Gaylord, and Rick Schribner. All of those Winston West competitors, the Winston West Provisionals, went to Hersha McGriff and Rick Torelli. There is Jeff Bodine. Jerry Punch has a report on the 15 car from Pit Road. Standing here in the Dale Earnhardt pit, they're, they're clocking the top four or five cars with different crew members. And the quickest lap the past couple laps have been by the car number 15. He has turned the pace up. They have turned and told car owner Richard Childers and Andy Petrie that apparently Jeff Bodine is running harder and harder now the past three or four laps. Seventh in points, Jeff Bodine. third still in third he did lead lap 24 and he's been as low as 10 as a matter of fact he led eight laps and the 37 car is off the course that's rick corelli yeah he just came right up here i thought he's coming up my lap Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but well i hope missed, not no he missed me about 20 feet <laughs> so he's uh, gonna try to get back out there he's sort of his right wheel sitting on that sand we were talking about the engine died on him but uh, the left wheels are on the grass, so here he goes. Here he comes into the turn, and you can see he'll lock the brakes, and of course that takes his steering away, but he keeps the brakes locked right on out into the sand. And we understand Ricky Rudd is in the pit. And indeed, the Tide Chevrolet is coming in, Jerry. Scheduled pit stop for the 1989 winner of the Save Mart 300. What should be their final scheduled stop, barring a caution flag. Crew now going to work. They will change all four tires, clean the windshield, and again, very critical, they get the car completely full of fuel. Right side tires are on. Left side jack comes around. Any difference and takes the left front tire off. The left rear tire is off. Trying to get the car completely full of fuel. The can going in. They're finished. Off the jack. And he is down and away. 22.1 second pit stop. And he's following the 76 car of Bill Sedgwick out of the pit. So Ricky Rudd has made his final pit stop of the afternoon, at least the final scheduled one. Where, where's Harry Gant? Oh. A while ago he was, uh-oh. Did I see some rear tire smoke? Oh. Yeah, I sure did. He finally goes around and around. And both those guys able to get by Harry. And I don't think Harry hit anything. Cope and Kendall both able to get around. And now Gant comes in, John. Well, this should be the last pit stop for Harry Gant. He will come in for a tire change. A little bit of a problem, as you said, out there on the racetrack. The crew will go to work. Right sides are already on. Harry is, is pointing at his microphone. Or, or he's, I think maybe he's out of water. He's pointing at the tube that comes up the floor. If he's asking for a drink of water, nobody's looking at him right now. Left side now going on. Harry now continuing to talk to the crew. They reach inside. I'm not really sure. I can't see exactly what the uh, problem is. But right now they'll come around and crawl in on the right side. Apparently, okay, what happened was the uh, plug from his radio had come to it. So he's 39.2 seconds, cost him a lot of valuable time. The plug from the radio going to his helmet had to become detached, so improvement had to reach in and fasten it back in for Harry. And it cost him more than 10 seconds to get that plug reattached. Yeah, it did, and it's too bad that he couldn't get their attention earlier because there was a free crew man that if he could have got their attention and they'd known what it was, they could have fixed it while they were finishing serving their car. Well, see, that's one advantage to a driver and a crew that talk a great deal, Ned. Like, uh, Mark Martin and Steve Mills said they talk all the time. Well, if, if Harry and Leo Jackson, Charlie Preston, those guys talked a great deal, w when they didn't hear from Harry for a couple laps a day, our radio must be out. And, and to check that plug, but evidently Harry, Charlie, those guys don't have a lot of communication on the radio. Ernie Irvin beginning to gain a little bit on Dale Earnhardt now as we see him coming through the S's. 
And another Fram Field summary for you. Yeah, the interval is closing between first and second. I tell you, the guy's impressing me. That guy back in fourth place. We look at, we're watching Ernie Irving go by the Kodak Film Chevrolet. But Mark Martin has been very impressive because, if I'm not mistaken, after he spun up there, there hasn't been a caution flag, has there? Didn't he do that on the green and there hasn't been yep. a caution? That is correct. And he is now in fourth place right on Jeff O'Neill's bumper and gaining on these guys. So Mark Martin's got a great race car this afternoon in that Valley Ford. Passing the number 20 car of Dirk Stevens, another one of the Winston West competitors. And as they come into turn number one, Urban is within about eight car lengths. You saw that there were, what, 26 cars, I believe, on the lead lap with Jeff Gordon, the last car on the lead lap. And he's not too far ahead of Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Urban. And Gordon considers this his home racetrack before he moved to Indiana, where he could drive sprint cars. He lived just down the road in Vallejo, California. Now we're riding with Tom Kendall. Should be coming in for a pit stop. Well, well let's see. He's coming down to, to uh, turn 10. There he comes to the corner. We can see all the heat underneath the car. He backs off the gas. You can see when they're... Well, I guess he's not off the gas. I thought he was backing off the gas, but he's not. Yep. Coming in. Kendall is on pit road. Slowing it down to observe the speed limit. Cherry, he should be there before long. Well, Tommy Kendall, the economics graduate from UCLA, who's a road racing expert, brings the family channel for Thunderbird up pit road, very deliberately at 35 miles per hour. Now the brakes, and Paul Andrews, Danny Glad, and the crew will go to work. It'll be a four-tire change. Danny Glad cleaning the debris out of the grill. Right side tires are on, left side already going on. Jack beneath the car, trying to get the car fueled. The windshield has been cleaned, and you can begin to hear Tommy Kendall rev the engine in the background. He is away, 20.9 seconds. Up through the gears, and he will come off of Kip Road. And now, Dale Jarrett has passed another, taking a position away from Davey Allison. That moves him up to six. And he continues his march towards the front. Started back, we're in that 30, 30, seconds. 30 seconds. Wow, up to sixth place. Very impressive. Here they come, off turn 10, toward me, down in turn 11, and we can see Dale Jarrett getting on the inside of Davey Allison, out breaking him. And Kenny Schrader's in the pits, changing right sides, looking inside the car for some reason. The jack goes down. That was the jack man looking inside the car, so uh, this is going to be a pretty slow pit stop for Schrader and the Kodiak Chevrolet. And he's motioning about something. The car's down off the jack and he's away. So that should be Ken Schrader's last regularly scheduled pit stop. Dale Earnhardt continues to hold on to the lead here at Sears Point with 47. Let's see, he may be... When's he going to turn into the pits, Bob? This could be it. The crew is standing by ready for him. Yes, he is. He's coming in the pits. And Ernie Irvin stays on the racetrack. Jeff Bonine goes in the pits. Mark Martin stays on the racetrack. But here comes Dale Earnhardt, the good race Chevrolet, down pit road. Leader relinquishes his position to make his regularly scheduled pit stop. And here's Jerry Punch. And the five-time national champion comes down pit road, Jeff Bodine, just behind him. And they will make their final pit stop. We would expect to see a four-tire change. Right side tires go on the Earnhardt car. Bodine pulls out. He has the very first pit on pit road, up toward turn one. One can of fuel in. And Bodine is in in the motorcraft force. Right side of the Bodine car, changing tires. Now they're on the left side of the Goodrich Chevrolet. One can of fuel in. Now Chuckland Myers throws the can away. Earnhardt spins the tire and heads back to turn one. As Bodine is still in, getting left side tires. And now Jeff Bodine in the Budmore Motorcraft Ford will complete his pit stop and back to turn one. Rusty Wallace in a pit stop, and he is now exiting pit road. Because we 
we could get a caution. This car number 81 has spun again, and he can't get going, and yellow flag will be coming out, and these drivers, those that have not stopped, will have to stop under caution. That'll put them farther back in the field. So could be a, a definite advantage for those who have made the pit stop. That is Jeff Davis again that has spun up there. What a tough break. Caution. What a tough break for Martin Martin and Ernie Irvin, who chose not to pit that time to stay on the racetrack. Now they've got to, like Ned said, start behind all these guys that just pitted. This is the only place that you can do that is the disadvantage by pitting under caution if someone else has pitted under green. That's right. Normally we say if you can stay out and catch a caution and then make a pit stop, you're okay. But it works just the opposite on a road course. We'll take a break as we are under our second caution of the afternoon here at Sears Point International Raceway in California. The field passes by under caution, the spun car of number 81 driven by Jeff Davis the reason we're under caution for the second time now here's the situation the pace car has picked up ernie urban as the leader mark martin second they will come in for a pit stop but the guys behind them like earnhardt and rusty wallace and others already made their pit stop and so these guys up front are going to have to fall in behind the others and this is a huge disadvantage to them yes it really is because it is tough to pass on this racetrack and uh those that made the green flag pit stop, this is exactly what they wanted to have happen. That includes Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine and Rusty and others. To watch the top of the screen. There is Jeff Davis. He got loose coming off of turn seven, Bob, and just could not get the car straightened out. And he spun it backwards into the outside there, and he, could, he had no traction, so he couldn't pull away. Others who pitted include Kyle Petty, also Bill Elliott, and the number 14 car of Terry Labonte. Now here comes Ernie Irvin into the pit, and Jerry Punch is right there. And these two teams pitting nose to tail at the far end of pit road toward turn one. Ernie Irvin in the Chevrolet, and Mark Martin in the Babylon Ford. Ernie Irvin trying to make it two wins in a row after picking up the win at Talladega just two weeks ago. And now Johnny Townsend, Tony Glover, and the Kodak crew will go to work on this machine while we check in at Dale Jarrett's pit. Tires are already on, left side tires being rolled out. They'll put them on a very good pit stop in the making for Dale Jarrett, who's been running consistently in this top 10 all day, Jerry. The race now for left side tires. Urban has left side tires. Martin left side tires. Who will win the battle off pit road? Urban is off the jack. And now Mark Martin is off the jack as Rusty Wallace has come back down pit road. And now he will follow Ernie Urban back up toward turn one. That's, that's a bit of a surprise to me. Why would Rusty come in for a, a quick pit stop there? Well, we'll find that out the answer to that question in just a moment. We are under caution here at Sears Point in California. Let's go to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and get an update on the second day of time trial for the 77th running of the 500. Bob, this is going to work out great because you guys are going to finish up a great race and it looks like we'll have time to come back here to Speedway, Indiana, the home of the 500, and bring you the final few minutes of happy hour. You folks have not missed a thing. I'm Dave Despain. We're live at the Speedway. Since we were last here with our one-hour update report, a few cars have been out for shakedown runs, but in the heat of the day, the cars basically stay parked. And now when the shadows begin to cross the Speedway is when the action picks up and we expect a few qualifying runs to add to this list of day two qualifiers. Jeff Andretti, Taylor Fabi, and Stan Fox will be in row six. Lynn St. James has come back strong today to qualify in row seven with Tony Bettenhausen and Al Unzer Sr. Bobby Rahal struggling here at Indy is uh, the second slowest qualifier in the field. Who's left for day two? Well, we think that uh, probably Gary Bettenhausen is going to make an attempt. He has been on the racetrack of late. The rest of these drivers all still anticipated to be out. When we come back to wrap up the story here in Indianapolis, the home of the 500. Let's go back out to Sears Point and the rest of the race. Thank you very much, Dave. Good to see that Lynn St. James is in the field once again. Jerry, let's get the answer to that question now about why Rusty came in for a second time. They have their pit stops so well orchestrated here in the Penske pits that when you make a small change, sometimes you can have a miscue. They were going to adjust the wedge in Rusty's Pontiac on his pit stop under caution, uh, or under before the caution came out a minute ago, when they changed four tires. And they weren't really sure that they got the left front lug nuts tight. And rather than take a chance, they decided to bring him back down pit road and check the left front lug nuts, make sure they're tight, and send him out. Better safe than sorry. 
taking no chances. Rusty Wallace still in contention for a win here at Sears Point. We'll be back with more of our live coverage after this. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. As a safe driver on the highway, you learn to utilize your mirrors effectively, both your rear view mirror and your side mirrors. But if you look at a Winston Cup race car, you'll notice there are no side mirrors. Well, actually, you may be able to start a race with one. But if you've seen our side cam views on some of the short tracks, you'll know it wouldn't be there for very long. That's what makes the rear view mirror that much more critical for a Winston Cup driver. And many drivers use the same kind of mirror that you and I use in a passenger car, a single view rear view mirror, which lets you know exactly who's behind you. But what about the inside and the outside? That's important for the 90s. So many teams have gone to the Wink multiple view mirror. This mirror has three different images, allowing you to know who's directly behind you, who's passing on the outside, and who's down on the inside. So in Hutt Strickland's case, it lets him know when his Big Mac is being attacked. Ooh. Well, you see cars in your rearview mirror. You don't want to see your drive shaft, right, John? You know, Bob, we all the time talk about a broken drive shaft. Earlier uh, in the race, I said that Bobby Hill had broken his drive shaft. What happened? The rear end locked up. Engine still turning. Transmission still turning. It twisted the drive shaft. So you have a drive shaft. Well, I guess this, at a ballpark, I guess this would be what? A three-foot-long pretzel or something like that? You have a little mustard, maybe a little salt. But this is what a broken drive shaft looks like. And I think that's pretty amazing. Back to weather forecasting, John. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You know, can't kid, hey, you can't kid me about my weather forecasting because I have the seal of approval of the NASCAR Pilots Association. All the guys who fly airplanes for the uh, NASCAR drivers told me today that I cannot let you guys give me any more grief about my weather forecasting because I was dead right down in Talladega. Oh, we'll find a way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob, yesterday you were not here for the uh, Southwest Tour race. Yep. The fellow broke a drive shaft. He was late on the racetrack. One of the one of the course workers went over and threw it across the wall and cut our camera, our cable camera off. Oh, no. <laughs> Going back to green here at Sears Point. Look at the rubber on the racetrack. Dale Earnhardt is your leader. Jeff Bodine second as the green comes out once again. Green comes on lap number 53. We've got 21 more laps to go. Oh, and Kendall spins right in front. Oh, and collects Earnhardt. Can you believe that? Man, oh man. And Kendall is sitting there facing all the oncoming traffic. And so far, looks like everyone in collision with Kitty Wallace. And look at the damage on Earnhardt's car. Oh, the race leader who was looking for his first road course win here today and had almost, you could say, dominated this event, has severe right side damage on the front of the car. Here's what happened as they came up after getting the green. And Kendall goes in the corner, and I think he gets a little bump from Derek Cope. Just a little bit of a nudge from Derek Cope, and around he goes, and Earnhardt comes by and has no place to go, runs right in the back of Kendall. I don't believe that it would have done any damage to Earnhardt's suspension on the car, but it tore some sheet metal loose there, maybe knocked something in on a tire, and he doesn't really know how much damage he has done to it. Well, Earnhardt wanted to cut into the points lead that Rusty Wallace had going into this event. Well, evidently it's, uh, it's hurt something in the steering car because yeah. he certainly didn't go through turn seven very good. No, nope, he is definitely not up to speed. Probably not to toe in. Out. See if he makes a pit stop. Looks like he's really fighting the wheels coming down through the edge and trying to keep control of the car. He will pick up the five bonus points for leading the most laps here today. This is the fourth time this year that's happened. So now the lead goes to Jeff Bodine. And we see Mark Martin trying to get underneath Ernie Irvin back there. I don't know if he made it or not, but there goes Bodine. And we see Martin and Earnhardt still side by side. Martin and Irvin. And it looks like that uh, Irvin was able to get the spot. Earnhardt's heading towards, he's going down pit road toward his pit as we watch Irvin and Bill Elliott. Well, 
Bill Elliott is on the lead lap. We haven't talked much about him, but he is up front there as Irvin tries to go to the inside, locks up the brake, trying to make the pass, cannot. We'll see if he can do it in this corner. Big one. Oh, and two cars are off the course. That's Ted Musgrave for one and Butch Gilliland. And this could bring out the third caution. If they can't get moving, and I don't think Gilliland's going anyplace. I don't think either one of them are. Well, certainly Gilliland can't go anywhere until... And here it's Urban trying to move around Bill Elliott. Morgan Shepard, if he can stay in front of Jeff Ludine, will get back in the lead lap. And Mark Martin is right there also with Bill Elliott on the top of Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford. And Earnhardt has left his pit, so if the caution flag could come out, does come out now, Earnhardt would be at least be able to go back to the back of the pack and just make another pit stop and adjust whatever tow in problems or whatever damage he may have. It is waving, Benny. The yellow is going to come out. The third overall caution of the afternoon. So Morgan, these guys are racing back to the line. Mark Martin trying to get underneath Bill Elliott, outbreak him into the corner. He is alongside. Now it's a drag race back to you, Bob. Let's see how they come off the corner. Martin and Elliott bang fenders as they come down here, and Martin is going to win the battle to the caution flag. Man, oh, man. We'll watch this once again as we see the 55 car and the 36 of Gilliland both get together. A little bump from Ted Musgrave, and Butch goes around, and they both get hung up in the tires and the dirt and unable to move as all these cars go by. Third overall caution of the day. Slowing the pace once again of the Save Our Supermarket 300 at Sears Point. Back with more right after this. Under our third caution of the day, and Mark Martin is in for what would appear to be an unscheduled pit stop. Jerry, what's going on? They're looking at the right side of the car. The crew said Mark had come, commented about a possible oil leak, so they are going to come around and put some fluid in the back of the car. They, have a, they are working on the right side of the car, and Mark is sitting as they are looking at the left front. And now Mark has shut the car off sitting here on pit road. We might mention Dale Earnhardt has been on pit road. I talked to Richard Childress a minute ago. Apparently Earnhardt has bent the suspension in the right front of the car. The control arm, the ball joint is bent. They're going to try to get it fixed. They have him back on the racetrack, but the car will not be drivable to the extent that he was early in the race. The car should be competitive, but not nearly as strong as it was earlier. Meanwhile, we're back here in the Valvoline pits watching Mark Martin and the crew as they are working on that machine. So two of the contenders having problems here in the last couple of laps. Earnhardt, the crash on the track. And now this is Mark Martin and Bill Elliott bumping as they come off of corner number 11. There's one hit, and there's two hits. But that shouldn't have hurt anything on the front end, at least, Bob, uh, because he was hitting with his left rear quarter panel. Mark Martin still waiting to go back out onto the racetrack. They're going to make another tire change. Back with more live coverage after this. Burt Reynolds talks with the Quaker State team. Hold on. I gotta get my name on the car, my fans are getting restless. No rules! How about on the big Q? The big Q stands alone, stands for quality. You can't get better protection. No other oil beats Quaker State. How about right here? No way. Red doesn't like to be crowded. My fans are getting demanding. All right, we'll go get the painter. <laughs> they must have had a hard time finding the painter. Nothing beats Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. Major League Excitement, five nights a week on ESPN. Sunday on America's Game of the Week, the explosive Giants face the San Diego Padres tonight. Live at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, Sunday Night Baseball. Getting 
set for a restart here at ESPN Speed World coverage of the Sears Point International Raceway Save Mart Supermarket 300. Down to Jerry for a quick report before green. Guys, Mark Martin just radioed in a minute ago and said, I need oil. They said, what? He said, you need oil. So he came down pit road. They put two gallons of Valvoline in the car. Mark said he doesn't know why, but he lost oil pressure. The pressure gauge was fluctuating. They put oil in it, and now it's back up to where it should be as we get set to return to green flag racing. Jeff Bodine takes the green flag. We're back under racing. Ken Schrader is second. Then Ernie Irvin, Bill Elliott, and Ricky Rudd. And it's by far Bill Elliott's best performance of 1993. And Rusty Wallace is off the pace. I believe Rusty Wallace is off the pace. Here he comes. Both those cars pass him on the start. Seems to be going pretty good right now. Ben, you don't know if he missed the gear or what happened, though. I don't know. Here comes Seth Strickland trying to move on the inside of him. So, yeah, he might be having a problem. Something is wrong with Rusty because on the acceleration off turn 11, he did not. And John Kernan, what's the problem? During that mishap, Rusty jammed the transmission in, and it is now broken. It is basically all he has is high gear. So Rusty Wallace got into the ship, stuck in high gear, and as you know, that makes it very difficult to go around the race pool. And now three of the top contenders have problems here in the late going. Earnhardt, Martin, and Wallace. This could help Davey Allison in the points. He came into this event 162 behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. And both Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty are also having good days, so we could see a tightening of the top five in points. A lot of traffic there behind Rusty Wallace and Hunt Strickland. Here is the lead group. That's Bodine and Ken Schrader headed toward turn number 11 again with Ernie Irvin right there also. Now that Derek Coke car that's fourth is not on the lead lap in the lap down. That caution flag was a huge, huge look and Schrader trying to get by Jeff Bodine, but this last caution flag, not the last one, was one before this, a huge advantage for Jeff Bodine because on the pit stop, he had lost five or six seconds to Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. The caution flag brought him back up, and when Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace had their problems, left him out front. Ken Schrader has never won on a road course. Boy, he's looking racy right now, Bob. He sure is. He does have one top five and six top tens. His best finish was here at Sears Point. He finished fifth, but now is in a position to battle Jeff Bodine for the lead as Ernie Irvin now closes in on Schrader and makes it a three-car race up front. Mark Martin is dead, we understand. The car has quit. Boy, a tough break for the Valvoline Ford. It has come to a halt. He's on the drag strip, off the race course. This won't cause a caution, but it will mean the end of the day for Mark Martin. And here's Trainer trying to go on the inside of Bodine through turn seven. Ooh, he got the fender out there to rub a little bit, but he had to back off, and that gave Ernie Irvin a little momentum as he came up there and moved right in on the back bumper of Trainer. We've got a race. Look at everybody else come through. Most of those cars on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett got the left front of the car way up in the air as he went over a rumble strip. And here they're coming down through turn 10. There's 10. They're making a right hander and hit towards me. Let me see Kyle Petty in the mellow yellow Pontiac. And Kyle and Dale Jarrett fanning out trying to get by Dale Earn. Davey Allison. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine con continues to lead as they come off 11. He staves off the challenge for the moment. In fact, puts about another car length between himself and Ken Schrader. And Schrader has Ernie Irvin all over him. And Dale Jarrett was able to get by Davey Allison down in turn 11. Now Blake is going in the corner and took the spot away. Ricky Rudd is fourth. Bill Williams is fifth. And Terry Labonte, Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's got something uh, loose on the back of the car, Ned. Yes, he has. I don't know if it's a, a piece of the plastic off of the bumper or what it is, Bob. But it is hanging back there. That's what it looks like. I don't know if it is or not. It might be <laughs> off of somebody else's car. It looks like it could. Because well, it I... looks like all the green paint is still there as far as his is concerned. Hmm. That's, a, a rear, that's a panel that goes under the rear of the car, off his car. Someone's hit, hit him in the back. And, 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 she, and Dale Earnhardt's off the course. Uh, Oh, where this is. It's up in turn three or four, I guess. Yes, there he's going down the hill toward turn five. Boy, Earnhardt just has to be tremendously disappointed. Look at this, though. Ernie Irvin going to the outside of Schrader. And Jerry, tell us about Mark Martin. 
Bob, when it rains, it pours. They have lost the rear gear in the Babel and Ford. Mark Parton currently six in the points. is through for the day. This is his fourth finish. Tenth or worse in his last four consecutive races. All right. We got a great battle up front. Jeff Bodine leading at the moment, but Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, and Ricky Rudd are right there challenging for the position. ESPN Speed World coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup racing today at Sears Point International Raceway, and things are really heating up. We have Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd, and Ken Schrader right there together on the racetrack, and not too far behind are Bill Elliott, Terry Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Davey Allison and Kyle Petty. Jeff Bodine slipped a little bit down in turn 11 that time. I thought Ernie might try to get under him. He did not do it, and Jeff Bodine still maintains that three-car length advantage. They're beginning to pull away a little bit on Ken Schrader now. I've noticed all day on new tires, Schrader could really run with the best of them. Slipping, and that's what's happening right there. You saw him slip out a little bit on that turn, and uh, he just sort of fades away after that. Jeff Bodine, the leader of this race, has fallen from second to seventh in the points over the last six races. So he wants to move back up and is leading here this afternoon. By the way, Bob, one that was that. Whoa! Big crash. Wally Dallenbach and Brett Bodine are involved. Two other cars are also. Can't see the number on them. Looks like John Krebs. And the yellow is out. Overall caution coming up. Now, are they going to pit when they come back and get the caution flag? That's the question now. I guess the first question is, who's going to win the race back to the caution flag? Whoa, Brett Bodine has got a visibility problem, among others. Well, he certainly does. Man, oh, man. just follow that yellow line, Brett. Brett. <laughs> that yellow line just keep following. Look out the window there. That's what he's doing, I think. Follow the yellow okay, brick here, road. Here are the leaders racing back to the line. They're trying to tell them where they are. Ricky Rudd getting hungry here. He'd like to get around Ernie Irvin. He's going to try it. Nope. Looked inside, goes outside, Benny. He tried it. Ernie came down to block that move, so Ricky thought he would fake him and go on the outside, but Ernie was not uh, going to play that game. And it looks like Ernie's going to win the race back to the line for second place. There it is. Yep, Ernie has second. Ricky third. Fourth caution of the afternoon. Here's a replay on what happened up there. Well, Brent Bodine, the back end, gets loose on the Quaker State Ford. And Wally Dallenbach is right there behind him. He gets stopped, but Brent keeps spinning in front of him. He hits him. And then the car number 20 <laughs> spins around. Here's John Krebs. He just comes in there and stops. He didn't have anywhere to go in the Diamond Ridge car. Yeah, that's Dirk Stevens at number 20. And there is what the Quaker State Ford looks like as a result of that incident up there in turn two. Back in a moment. Man, we're out here to test. Nothing but rain. Hey, where's Mario? Two champions sharing a winning formula. Haviland Formula 3. I hear your power is looking good for you this year. It's unbelievable. Must run pretty hot in a tight draft, though. It's got that pretty well beat. Complete professionals who rely on the same complete protection you can buy right off the shelf. Yeah, I'm wide open all the time. The hey, only way to do it. Haviland Formula 3 motor oil from Texaco. Quit raining, please. At 180 miles an hour, Daryl Waltrip can't afford a bad part. Ouch, man, that hurt. Like you, I need quality parts at the right price. And at Western Auto, we guarantee it. You'll find thousands of top name brand parts, all backed by Western Auto's unbeatable everyday low price guarantee. Right? Right, DW. Pick up AC oil filters at Western Auto's unbeatable low price every day. AC oil filters, like buying time. The right parts, unbeatable low prices. At Western Auto, we guarantee it. Right, DW. ESPN Speed World is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your Bud. Four-car crash has brought out our fourth caution of the afternoon. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to come by this time and get the one more lap to go signal. So they will have one more lap under caution and then go green. So we will take this opportunity for another commercial break. Come back for racing action with Jeff Bodine leading the State Mart 300.
We are back at Sears Point now. Today was the second day of time trials at Indianapolis, and we'll have coverage of the third and fourth days next weekend, Saturday at 4 o'clock and Sunday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time time trials at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're going to take another quick break and be back for the green flag. World today at Sears Point International Raceway in California, about an hour north of San Francisco in the beautiful Napa Sonoma Valleys. And we are just about to go green once again from our fourth caution of the day. It is a race among several, including Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd, Ken Schrader, Bill Elliott, Terry Lombardi. The green flag is waving. Here we go. The question is. How many cars will get to one and two before we have a crank? All of them, let's hope. Oh, almost a problem there. Michael Walter, P.J. Jones got together, and I'm impressed, guys. You're doing a heck of a job. Rusty Wallace is starting to smoke a little bit now. And there's Dale Earnhardt, who was well off the pace because of his encounter with Tom Kendall a few laps ago. John Kernan has a comment on Ricky Rudd, who's running third. Well, Bob, you know, everybody knows we listen to the scanners down here in the pits, and we listen to Tom Kendall, the crew chief, and the drivers. Well, during that caution, we just told Gary Dehart that everything was going to be all right because Ricky had just run the 94 lead motor. And Gary said, that a boy, Ricky. <laughs> well, if you're a super, super, uh oh. Here's some racing coming in the right rear. Seven as Terry Labonte gets on the outside of Bill Elliott. Dale Jarrett and Davey Allison are right there. Don't know if Terry can make the pass. I believe he has. And here's Jeff Gordon spinning out right as you turn, come off of oh, turn and seven. Jeff Bodine spins. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Bill Elliott. Oh, it's seven. Now Terry Labonte is up on the bank. Elliott backs into the guardrail and all kinds of problems here. Well, they were running side by side as they started through the Estes, Bob, and apparently they just caught up with them down there somewhere. There is Bodine. He's okay. And he's real wide again, and here comes Ernie. This will be the race to the caution, or will it? No caution. No caution. The flag is not waving. Well, Red, is Terry Labonte's car still up on the bank? No, I can't see it from here. I don't think so. I think it, I think it got down off the bank. Labonte's car got way up on the bank, but I think it did come down. Elliott backed into the guardrail. And Elliott has got some pretty heavy damage to his car as he hits. Here's the replay. Okay, they're coming through the acid, and Elliott and Labonte do indeed get together. A lot of smoke there. The cars behind them don't know where to go because of all of that smoke. There you see Dale Jarrett coming out of it. And Labonte up on the bank on the outside. Elliott backed into the guardrail down on the other side. And Michael Walter had some pretty heavy damage to his car. He makes a pit stop to repair the damage on the right front fender. And then we got a heck of a race coming towards you. Yeah, we really have. Those three cars are going at it. Not many left left. Bodine still leads, but Ernie Urban and Ricky Rudd really putting the pressure on as they come into turn seven. Bodine locks the right front wheel. Rudd goes high, gets back down on the inside, gets good traction off of that turn. No passes made there, though. Boy, we have seen some unbelievable finishes here at Sears Point in the years past, and I have a feeling we're going to see it. Oh, and Jeff Bodan! Oh, he saved it, but I think he's going to lose the lead. Here comes Urban alongside him. They bump, and Urban has the lead. Maybe he had some debris or a little dirt that was kicked out on the racetrack there. And Rudd is, going to, Rudd is going to try to outbreak Jeff Bodine. Bodine trying to outbreak Ernie Irvin. <laughs> so now what's going to happen? Bodine is going to get the lead back. That's what's going to happen. And here comes Rudd going to try to take the lead back from Bodine. Bob, it's Bodine as they come in front of me. Rudd second and Irvin third. Woo! Man, oh, oh, and Ernie, look at all that smoke out his car. <laughs> Boy, they're hugging that inside, not giving any room for anybody to get a fender down on the inside as they go through these tight turns. I think you're exactly right, Ned. I think he hit some uh, debris or some dirt that have been kicked up on the track because that happened right where uh, Elliott and Labonte got together. And here's Rudd trying to make a bid again with nine laps to go. Is 
This is turn six of the carousel. Mid is coming towards you, close bumper to bumper. Oh, it'll be a race in here to turn seven. Your place and my place is where the excitement is. You see Rusty Walker back there. He's parked it now. He's out of the race. As the leaders come in here, and here's Irvin up on the outside of Rudd coming into turn seven. Can he make that kind of a pass? No, that won't quite work. Well, maybe he's going to try it on the inside. No, can, somewhere here is where Jeff Bonine lost control last lap. Let's see if he can get through. Okay, this time. Yeah, makes a good corner that time. Yeah. So it's Jeff Bodine, Ricky Rudd, and Ernie Irvin hooked together. And Ken Schrader is not too far behind in fourth position. We got less than 10 laps to go in this one. And it's anybody's race right now. Bodine staving off the challenge of both Rudd and Irvin. Back with more of our live coverage after these messages. Stay with us. our leaderable interval leaderboard and you can see how close it is first second and third ken schrader is a little more than two seconds behind and dale jarrett is about six seconds behind but if i were ken schrader i would be very content with where i am right now because these guys look like they could crash each other out at any moment i tell you what just a lap or so they was they were nose to tail but now vote i got a couple of car length advantage is what happened to Jeff Bodine earlier as he came. Yeah, you can see a piece of debris there. I, he was trying to avoid something laying in the racetrack, it yep. looked like, and got out in the debris, and Ernie Irvin was able to get by. He did pass him, folks, believe me. And then going down into turn 11 right in front of me, Jeff Bodine passed him back. Here we go. Watch this. As Rudd is trying to get by Bodine, Bodine is trying to get by Irvin. Three abreast. No, can't work. And Rudd, if Rudd kind of turned the fit and look how the 15 guard just took Ernie way out wide. Well, Donnie Wingo from Jeff Bodine's team has been named the Western Auto Mechanic of the race. Now let's see what happens on this lap. Coming into turn seven, Bodine still leads. And here's Rudd. Making a move. Looks like he wants to go to the outside, but he had no intention of doing that. He's just taking him out, trying to get Jeff to go high. He wanted to get back on the inside, and that didn't work. Rudd's best finish this year was at Atlanta. Sixth win on a road course. Looks like Jeff Bodine is out running him through the S's, Ned. Yes, he does. He looked very good down there. Other than that one time when he dodged that debris. And up in the slower part of the racetrack from turn one to turn six. Mm -hmm. like Rudd, how he went to yeah. and it occurred at Watkins Glen in August of 92. Here's the 68 car that's driven by Dorsey Schrader. He's running in ninth position. And that blue car there, the 22, that's Bobby Labonte. And because of lack of pit space here, Labonte was one of three drivers that had to pit in the garage area. He's done a fine job getting up to 10th. And here's the rookie points race. Jeff Gordon, who is 16th, is the leader in that battle with Kenny Wallace second and Bobby Labonte in third place. Here the leaders come again, Bob, off turn six, headed into turn seven. They've tightened up a little bit as they come into this turn. Bodine still leading, Rudd second, and Ernie Irvin looking on the outside once again. Darrell Waltrip had some smoke when he came by here the last time, and I believe he has pulled into the garage area. I tell you what, Rudd is winning the battle up in the slow part of the racetrack. It looks like Jeff is winning the battle in the fast part of the racetrack. Six laps to go. Can Jeff Bodine hold off Ricky Rudd, Ernie Irvin, and Ken Schrader? We'll be back with more in a moment. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kearney, Dr. Jerry Punch back at Sears Point Raceway. And Jeff Bodine now once again begins to stretch it out a little bit. But again, Benny, it's because he works so well through the S's. Yes, 
he really worked fast in turn seven where Ned is located to where I am. And he we should have a caution, guys. Uh -oh. Here's Dorsey Schrader in the car number 68 that's hung up out here. He and Bobby Labonte came off of this turn side by side a moment ago. And uh, here we'll take a look at it as it came off of this turn. There you see Bobby Labonte in the Maxwell House car down on the inside. Dorsey up on the outside. There's Earnhardt back behind it. Here we are back up there. And Dorsey just kept slid right on out into the grass. No traction out there. The car spins sideways and gets hung up there. Ran out of racetrack. He was in eighth position when the incident had occurred, and the caution is out. We are under full course caution again for the fifth time. And now they will be racing to the caution. Well, Ned, here they come. This is the last time Rudd, it may be the last time Rudd will have an advantage up in turn seven. Well, he's coming off of turn six there now for, for that turn. He really is not close enough to make much of a challenge here this time. He had a good lap that time. Really got away from him through turn seven, eight, nine, as you pointed out before. Rudd moves in a little bit coming into turn seven, but no threat to get up there on him. And Dorsey Schrader is far enough off the track there that he's uh, certainly out of harm's way. Bodine with about a four car length advantage now, four or five car length over Rudd. This uh, interval he's widening here between first and second and between second and third as Ernie Irvin now has dropped back a little bit on Rudd. But they're going to be racing to the caution here and, of course, bunch back up for the finish. Here comes Jeff Bodine. He breaks the car, stays right on the bottom of the racetrack. Rudd does the same. Now Jeff accelerates and drives back to the start finish line. Caution is out. Bodine takes it. We'll be back with more from Sears Point and the Save Mart 300. Stay with us. solubilizes grease on contact, neutralizing its ability to stick. So if it won't come clean with Super Clean, it won't come clean. You know, working at AutoZone is more than looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, it's, it's listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They know ever rattled by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they've got a problem they're going to fix for themselves, I'm going to do my best to help them get whatever they need no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them. A hot new peanut just rode into town with a spicy taste that's getting everybody all fired up. Got some more. Maybe you ought to practice with mild. Try new planter's heat in mild and hot. How far will your money go in buying an Intruder 800? Introducing Suzuki Get On It Flexible Financing. Want to see it again? Other programs include zero down low monthly payments and first time buyer. Get on it. Back at Sears Point International Raceway, Sonoma, California, and the green flag is going to be coming out when they reach the line. This is our fifth caution of the day. It was brought out by the number 68 car driven by Dorsey Schrader getting off the track in turn number seven. Here's a Napa field summary for you. There are the top five, Rudd, Irvin, Schrader, and Dale Jarrett in fifth. Six through ten, showing you that Bobby Labonte, a great run in eighth. Dale Earnhardt, despite the problems, is still in the top ten, and also a top ten going for Rick Wilson. Other cars that are still on the lead lap include Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin. Sixteen cars are on the lead lap. Bill Elliott has dropped off the lead lap. And so, this will make his tenth consecutive race that he will not finish on the lead lap. The Ned, 68 car, Ned. Ned, what they do? Leave that yeah. car there and get Dorsey out of the car? Well, uh, you know, he got out of the car. There's no, no problem, but... Uh, now they've got the wrecker up there to try to get him away and uh hope they don't maybe they can get him out of there before that green flag drops i'm sure they'll keep an eye on it here and maybe rescind the uh green flag plan 
if they can't get him out of here quickly. They don't have to pull him too far. They can pull him down here to the end of the drag strip and won't take them but just a little bit if they ever get hooked up to it. They there. have indicated to the driver. Now he's getting to move him. They're, they're going. No, 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 no. The yellow flag is being waved by the Doyle Ford, and they will not go green. They had been told down in turn seven and arrest around the course that they would go green, but now they are showing that they will not. Jerry Punch has a story. What Jeff Bodine's crew was concerned with down here is the fact that they had slowed the caution car down to try to be able to move the 68 car out of the way. Donnie Wingo, the crew chief, as you're looking at the Motocraft fifth, talking to the NASCAR official and talking to Ernie Irvin's crew chief, Tony Glover, they were concerned about him slowing the pace car down too much with Elmo Langley and that Ford, Thund Elmo Langley and that Ford Thunderbird to get the cra race back under green. Now, what we are told is they will have green and white flags next time by. It will be green, white, and checkered. So, in other words, a two-lap shootout as we had at Talladega. A one-lap shootout, Bob. Okay, well, a one-lap then. In any case, a shootout. And we'll be back to see how that goes in just a moment. Back at Sears Point International Raceway in the Save Mart Supermarket 300 ESPN Speed World coverage. Here's the situation. We're still under caution. However, they will be going green next time around. They will get the green and the white flag at the same time. So we're going to have a one-lap shootout. We had a two-lap shootout in Talladega. And need I remind you what we saw here a couple of years ago when we had Ricky Rudd and Davey Allison involved in a scramble as they came off the corner for the white flag. Let's see what happens this year. Rudd is in second position at the moment with Jeff Bodine, the leader. Ernie Irvin is in third position. And remember what, was it 1989 that Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace came off turn seven, coming down for the checkered flag, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. When Rusty tried to get by on the outside and they ran out of room coming off the corner. Yep. the field passing under our camera position here under caution there's Sterling Marlin and Ed Musgrave and Michael Waldrop we'll switch our infrared camera on here and see the heat that's being generated by these cars you'll see the heat underneath them you should see them the uh, brakes on the inside of the tires are red hot these cars are a little warmer than that T-Bird that Emma Lang was driving on <laughs> yeah that's for sure we go it's almost time yep 2.5 miles to go for the win of the save mark 300 elmo langley's pulling away jeff bodine it's his race to start he'll start it whenever he wants to he's leading him to a very slow restart now he nails the accelerator pulls away from rudd takes the green and white flag at the same time and here we go to determine who the winner is going to be at sears point Through one and two, Rudd closes in. Jeff O'Donnell got a bad corner up in turn. And Dale Jarrett spin. spin. Dale Jarrett spinning, nailing Davey Allison. Other cars are involved. Most keep going. I believe that's Bobby Labonte back there that got collected. And the left front tire on Dale Jarrett's car is... Uh, no, oh, and Jeff O'Donnell is sideways and saves it. Now here comes Rudd on the... Well, he blocks that move. Cannot make the pass. Jeff Bodine was totally sideways and saved it. Now they come down to the carousel in turn six and then they head to you for the final time. Urban gets uh, below run. And he makes the pass. There's Kenny Schrader right there too. Here they come off of turn six into turn seven. So you know, I'll have to head in here, but you can rest assured that Ernie Urban's going to try to move on the outside. He runs in there hard. Can he make it? Bodine hard on the brakes too. Now hard on the accelerator as he comes off the turn. He keeps the lead. And heads are in the end for the S. Jeff Bodine looking for his second road course career victory. His first since 1984. He's holding off Ernie Irvin and Ricky Rudd as they head up toward you, Benny. 
I mean, Jeff Bodine has been so strong to the essence all day long, and once again, he gains that three car length that he needs so desperately. And here they come for the last time, turn 11, Jeff Bodine on the brake hard. Ernie Irvin trying to close, but not being able to make much of a move. Bodine slips a little high, but I think he's going to make it back to you, Bob. I think he's going to make it. Here he comes. Bodine with about a five car length advantage. Jeff Bodine wins. Ernie Irvin finishes second, then Ricky Rudd, Ken Schrader, and Kyle Petty. And for Jeff Bodine, he becomes the seventh different winner in NASCAR Winston Cup competition in 1993, and he wins his 14th career Winston Cup event. Jerry punches with Donnie Wingo. Donnie, Western Auto Mechanic in the race talked to by the officials here. Donnie, congratulations on a tremendous effort. Yeah, Jeff drove a heck of a race. You know, the car worked good. We got a little bit behind on that first pit stop. Made it up a little bit there toward the end. But everything worked good. You know, I want to thank our sponsor, Motocraft, the Igloo Ford, Goodyear Tires, and I want to say hello to Walter back home. This is for you, buddy. Wish you was here. Talking about Walter Bud Morning. You told me you're not sure you could hold your breath for one final lap, but you made it. Yeah, we made it, you know. He he was kind of taking it easy there when he first took the lead, trying to save the tires, because we was planning on going all the way. We didn't want to make any more stops, and it worked out good. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. appreciate it. Donnie Wingo, Western Auto Mechanic of the Race and the Chief Mechanic of the Winning Car. And there is Bobby Labonte, who has gotten out of his Maxwell House car, not happy about something or someone. There's Davey Allison, who's also out of his car. But in any case, the win goes to Jeff Bodine. It's his first win since North Wilkesboro in October of last year. Davey Allison making the long walk back toward the uh, victory lane area and the Polish victory lap by Jeff Bodine. He will be taking over ownership and management of the number seven car driven by Tom Kendall, and Kendall brings the car home and drives it behind the wall. Jeff Bodine making a short Polish victory lap here in turn number 11. He has won the Save Mark 300. We will be back here at Sears Point to wrap it up, but then we will also send you to Indianapolis and get a wrap up on the second day of time trials for this year's 500 mile race. So we'll be back here in just a moment. The NHL is playing for keeps. The Campbell Conference Championship begins tomorrow night, live on ESPN. Back at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we're live. Gary Bettenhausen is on the track making warm-up laps for a qualifying attempt that will be coming up momentarily. Gary spun this car yesterday, did not get to run on pole day, and will take a shot at it when we come back here with our continuing live coverage of time trials from Indianapolis. Congratulations to Jeff Bodine. What a finish out at Sears Point, and we'll be going back there for the winter interview and then coming right back to Indy to wrap up the story of this, the second day of qualifying for the 500. This is Gary Bettenhausen. The shot is live, and he is on his warm-up lap here in anticipation of a qualifying attempt that is going to trigger a flurry of happy hour activity. Several cars in line trying to beat the 6 o'clock deadline here as we head into happy hour, the fastest time of the day. Derek Daly, any predictions about speed? Well, this is the time to do it if he's going to extract it from this Buick engine car. Such an emotional tie the Bettenhausen family have here to this speedway. Everybody that's still left here pulled for Bettenhausen to be successful on the second day here of time trial. The victory interview will be following immediately after this run. We're going to stay with this. The picture is live, and we will bring you Gary Bettenhausen's qualifying attempt, then go back to Sears Point to hear from, a, I'm sure, a very happy Jeff Bodine. This is the Menard team that's been such an interesting story here at the Speedway over the last couple of years. Uh, they brought Nelson Piquet here, of course, last year, which was headline news. He hit the fence. He's back this year and qualified in the show inside row five. But the Bettenhausen tradition goes all the way back to the sprint car days. His dad, who died here at the Speedway, and the brothers who have had such mixed uh, results. And Gary himself still looking for that first win in the big race. Still looking for the first win. Two years ago, he could have had his first pole position. He was the fastest man here in qualifying, but he was not on the pole. 
because he did not do it on the first day of qualifying. He was a second day qualifier. But his first lap speed is above 219 miles an hour. Look at that. Almost 220 miles an hour for Gary Bettenhouse. A smart team, a smart driver. When they spun yesterday, they knew the challenge that they faced. They had a lot of repair work to do on the car. They took their time. They got it running yesterday, but they elected not to make what would have been, I think, a rather frantic late afternoon attempt. Instead, they took the time they had. They worked it up to speed all day today, and now comes the fail. This is a Buick V6 engine in this car. His second lap time is even faster. He is now above 220 miles an hour. Above 220. But the Buick engine cars have not been that good here at Indy this year. They have suffered from an oversteer or a loose condition that has plagued and haunted these drivers all week long here. And Gary Bettenhausen is still not comfortable with the handling of this car. As we bring you the live coverage here of Gary Bettenhausen's run, we should talk, I think, a bit more about uh, the recent past. He's into the final lap now very quickly. The, the recent past and probable future for the stock block Buick power here at the Speedway. Well, the stock block Buick needs, needs lots of downforce to give it lots of grip in the corner. Then the horsepower of the Buick engine can shine. However, the regulators on USEC in particular have taken away downforce this year. It has affected this car more than anything else the car has not got as much grip on the corner when you come back onto the road and accelerate this vehicle here again and has qualified for the uh, indy 500 we'll have the speed here momentarily then we'll be going back to sonoma and the last lap drops off just a tiny bit the average speed 220.380 that will put bettenhausen outside row six and he'll move Stan Fox and five more of today's qualifiers down a bit. We'll go back to Sonoma. We're coming back to Indy after Jerry Punch with Jeff Bodine. Thank you very much, Dave Despain. We're here in the AC Delco Winter Circle at Sonoma, California. Sears Ford Raceway and Jeff Bodine has climbed out of the Motorcraft Ford and stands to the cheers of this crowd here in Northern California. Jeff Bodine picking up his first win in 1993 waving to this massive crowd here in the beautiful golden hills of northern california and jeffrey as you catch your breath here first of all congratulations on what had to be an emotional win for you it really is jerry uh for kathy and i both uh, yeah there's tears in the eyes right now alan this is for you uh i guess everyone knows we kathy and i just bought that team here last week and well sure was going to feel good if we could have won the first time out as being a car owner and uh, here at Sears Point, it's really special to us. Uh, it's all for Allen and that team. Uh, we're looking forward to next year, but you know we're with a pretty good team right this year. But more, hi, Bud. You're back home, Matt and Barry. Love you guys. Uh, but when you're not here, we win. What's going on? <laughs> we wish you're here though, Bud. Hope everything's okay. But it's a great car today. Can you believe how this thing handled? And a lot of runs, it just kept getting faster and faster. What everyone else slowed down. But just want to thank Motorcraft, Dig Blue, Ford. Uh, this is the first win for Ford this year, maybe? I don't know. And uh, the Family Channel, thanks for sponsoring the number seven car. Hopefully, that'll be a long relationship with those folks. But just a super day here, a beautiful day. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Talk about how good the car was. So you had an excellent effort on that last lap. Going in turns three and four, you had the car way out of shape. <laughs> well, we were getting knocked around, and that's what you expect on a last lap. And uh, so I was ready for it. And, the car just took off, and uh, I don't know what happened behind me, but I look back, I had a pretty good lean on Ernie, so felt pretty comfortable going down in this last corner like nobody could get to me. So uh, it was really exciting for us as drivers. I know Ernie and, and uh, Ricky and I were having a lot of fun. I hope the race fans watching did. It was a neat race. Now, with about 10 laps to go, you had a little trouble up in the S. Is the car skidded a little bit? Well, somebody had wrecked there, I guess, and uh, my spotter, Preston Miller, told me there was some debris there. He said, be careful. I just wasn't careful enough. A lot of grass, a lot of uh, dirt laying out there, and the car got sideways. Ernie got, Ernie got under me, got by me, but I got back under him, and I guess Ricky was trying to go under all three or two of us, but it was pretty exciting, wasn't it? An emotional end of the week for Jeff Bodine. It ends with a Polish victory lap and a tribute to his fallen friend, Alan Kowicki. Now with a big kiss from Kathy Bodine, let's go back upstairs to Bob Jenkins. Jeff Bodine, the winner here at Sears Point today, and 40 of the 43 cars that began this event were running at the finish.
We will be back here at Sonoma in just a moment, plus more coverage from Indianapolis. Stand by. ESPN Speed World is brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. And by Suzuki, your Suzuki motorcycle dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And Jeff Bodine has won the Save Mart Supermarket 300 here at Sears Point International Raceway this afternoon. On the last lap, Bodine had problems but was able to hold off uh, all the challenge and there was a wreck up in turn number three. And let's see if we can determine what happened Looks to me like that Kyle Petty was trying to get under Dale Jarrett and they come down, they made contact and Davey Allison comes along, knocks the front end off of Jarrett's car and Davey goes back across the racetrack but he was not able to finish the race so I don't know if he had some problems after this or just couldn't steer the car but he did not finish the race in the Howland Ford. And a big break for Dale Earnhardt who was able to move up some positions because of that. John Kernan is with Ernie Irvin. And I might add, allergy is getting a little bit of the best of Ernie today. But Ernie, you put up a good battle out there, came home second. It was quite a finish, wasn't it? Well, it sure was. You know, uh, these West Coast people haven't got to see a good finish like that out here. And they did with Ricky and, uh, and Davey that one time. But, you know, this was a three-car battle. And, you know, Jeff was one of the best cars all day. And he gave everybody a good run and a good show. And, um, you know, hats off to him. He really drove the course real good today. And, you know, our car was really good. The Kodak Film Chevrolet drove real good. It was just a little loose. And... You know, I, I guess we had a second place car today, and that's where we brought it home. Ernie Irvin, who worked with us yesterday on the broadcast, Bob comes home with a fine second place finish today. And now let's take a look at the point standings. And Dale Earnhardt has 1,526, moving back into the lead with Rusty Wallace. Now 20 points behind Allison Petty and Jeff Bodine, the top five, six through ten. Dale Jarrett, Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin, Mark Martin, and Jeff Gordon. Activity at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the second day of time trials. We'll be back here at Sonoma, but now let's go there and Dave Despain. All right, thank you very much, guys. We certainly enjoyed the race. We were able to watch it here in Indy, and I have one observation. We've talked so much here about the rumble strips at Indy. I have a feeling when the stock cars come here on August 6th of 1994 that those drivers aren't going to be too concerned about the rumble strips. The shot is live. The driver is Mark Smith. And he's trying to become not only another rookie to make the 93 race, but the first driver named Smith, if you can believe this, ever to qualify for the 500. He's got a pretty good piece of iron here. And uh, I don't know, Derek, what do you think his chances are? It's a Penske Chevrolet, so that sounds good. However, Mark Smith has struggled around the 216 mile an hour speed range all week here. Has not just got quite got that comfort zone that you need. Uh, comes here from the Indy Light Series, is a rookie, very much on a learning curve. This is Frank Arciero's team that has been put together, a new team now based in California that Mark Smith drives for, and the backing comes from Sears Craftsman Tools. Well, those Craftsman Tools were used today in particular trying to find that magic setup for Mark Smith. This is the end of his first time lap. The youngster hails from McMinnville, Oregon, and is into his second lap. We'll have the speed in a moment. Eh, 214.4. Nothing to write home about there. The slowest qualifier right now is Bobby Rahal at 217.1. And just check that. It is, Gray, uh, it is Scott Pruitt at 216.7. One other uh, bit of information while you were watching Victory Lane from Sonoma, we should bring you up to date on the fact that Jimmy Vassar has qualified at 218.967. That's inside row seven. That makes him the 19th qualifier of the weekend. We watched Mark Smith run yesterday during practice, and he autographed the wall with those Goodyears coming off turn four because he got way too close. That's a long, long black line and was brought in for a consultation with Mark White and his crew chief. It is very dangerous to run these cars against the wall because it's the inside wall that suddenly jumps up and bites you when you bounce off the outside too hard. So Mark Smith, not happy, struggling. You can see that lap two went up a little bit. This could be a learning curve here for the Penske with lap three is. Watching Mark Smith, a former Super B champion, 26 years of age, and one of the few B versions of the Chevy. We don't have one in the show yet. Uh, we got an A or two in there, and of course the C is the one to have. This is the B version as he heads into the white flag final, uh, final lap. 
There's Mark White and looks very concerned. 2.13. This will bring out a yellow flag. They cannot gamble. I don't think they can gamble with a speed like this. Now, here's the only reason a team like this would gamble. They do have another car in Gasoline Alley that Mark Smith could use next week if possible. So if they put this car in the show at whatever speed he can do, they have an insurance policy in the, in the form of another Chevrolet, another Penske car back in Gasoline Alley. But if he gets bumped next week, he could have a second chance at qualifying. The crew are on the watches up in turn four, and if they elect not to take the run, the, yeah, they will wave the yellow flag. In this case, no yellow. The checker falls, and Mark Smith will take that run and become the slowest qualifier thus far in the field. He'll be the 25th man to, I'm sorry, he'll be the 24th man, along with Lynn St. James, the female driver, thus the 25th qualifier for the 500. But his speed will be in jeopardy. It will be in jeopardy, but let me just throw this out. Usually, front to back on the grid here is covered by a spread of about 10 miles an hour. Last year, it was 12 miles an hour between Guerrero and the slowest. This year, remember, the pole is only 223, so Mark Smith is only nine miles an hour off the pole, so that may be safe enough to keep him in the race. Could be a tight field this year. Gary Bettenhausen is safely in and uh, will be starting uh, in proximity with his brother, Tony, who made the show earlier. He's standing by with Marty Reed. Yeah, Gary B is going to be 18th on that starting grid. And you were telling me just now that this car is much more difficult to drive than last year's model, which went much quicker. True. I think all the drivers are finding that this year with the changes in the racetrack and everything. You have to have the car so neutral to be able to run four laps because if, you car if the car goes to a push or an understeer, you can't run down below the line like we could last year. You're just going to, you have to get out of the throttle to keep from knocking the fences down. Is the Buick now at a disadvantage with all these changes? Well, we certainly seem to be about four or five miles an hour slower than the Fords and some of the Chevys. Uh, I don't know if it's just because we haven't found it yet. Our straightaway speed is down quite a bit because we're having to put so much downforce in the car with the wings that uh, it's hurting our straightaway speed. So. Uh, you know, the engine's quite a bit bigger and heavier than the Ford, so that might be a part of the reason, too. Gary Bettenhausen, 18th on the starting grid, guys. Just a couple of years ago, the fastest car out there, though, as Derek pointed out a moment ago, not on the pole. This is Davy Jones now, and uh, Davy's had some struggling to do here during uh, his rookie attempt to make the Indy 500. He is on the green, which means he will get this qualifying run in before 6 o'clock. It's very unlikely, I think, that anyone else will get a shot at a 500 start. So this may well be the last qualifying run of the day. Davey timed it perfectly. He's got the coolest temperatures. But earlier today, we saw him using all of the rumble strips and the last little bit of print jump by the wall. And we got to hope that he's got that car working better now. He's in trouble. Uh, Engine blow up. Trouble for Davey Jones. If you can imagine, he had a wall banging incident earlier this week, and it took this team 38 straight hours to put this car back together. This is the ex-Bobby Rahal car from last year that Davey Jones is trying to qualify here. The biggest problem they had when they crashed during the week is they split the gearbox casing, and there are no gearbox casings available. Oh, look at this. Look at what happened here. Davey Jones crashed into the pit wall on his way, and he must be on fire. There must be something serious wrong with that car. Uh, he got out in a hurry. I don't believe he's suffering fire. We've seen a couple of drivers have to bail out of burning cars here, but I think Jones is okay. Very strange circumstances. Just at the tail end of his effort to get back to the pits, the car suddenly snapped left and into the wall. They've got more damage to repair. I think it is safe to assume that between the, uh, the oil that he left up on the racetrack and the problem here, that nobody else is going to make it back out on the track today. And that was attempt number two for Davy Jones. So this car only has one more attempt left to get into this Indianapolis 500. So he never made it around to take an official lap. So we don't even know what speed he was going to do. This is along the back straight. Look at the inside. And that look, it's actually hard to see whether it's, I think it's something in that left rear wheel or bodywork or something that has come adrift, not necessarily an engine, unless, of course, he, car back he shut the engine this down is the now. This Bobby Rahal car. Well, it's conceivable that there might be a relationship. I think it's probably safe to, to guess that. Now, wh watch what happens here. This is where it some... Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can't see what happened know. there. 
We're not going to speculate about it anymore. That's going to wrap up the story here at Indy. Davy Jones is unhappy. On that note, let's go back to Sears Point for a wrap up the stock car race. We know you are, and we know you have some problems. All right, thank you, Dave. Hopefully, uh, Davy Jones will be able to make the race next weekend. Here at Sonoma, Victory Lane belongs to Jeff Bodine. He has won the Save Mart Supermarkets 300. Here is the unofficial rundown now, showing you that Ricky Rudd was second, Ernie Irvin third, Ken Schrader fourth, and Kyle Petty finished in fifth position. And gentlemen, this uh, second five here, that was jumbled because of that crash we had up there in turn three. Yeah, it really was. Dale Earnhardt, you see, moved all the way up to sixth place. Dale Jarrett was running fifth and dropped to 13th in that uh, little melee up there. and. Uh, of course, that hurt him in the points. And see, Bill Elliott, we mentioned earlier that he had gone a lap down. And Bobby Labonte, who was up in about uh, 11th or 12th, one of the top running rookies, uh, fell back there at the end. So evidently, he had a problem on the very last lap. There you see some of the Winston West drivers finishing in 26th and in 30th position. Bill Schmidt was one of the reasons for our overall cautions. Dorsey Schrader also brought out a full course caution. Mark Martin finished way back in 40th position, certainly not a reflection of how well he had uh, a run going. And Herschel McGriff, the 65-year-old Winston West competitor, finishes in 43rd position. Well, our next Speed World coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup competition will be at Pocono International Raceway in Pennsylvania. The champion spark plug 500, that will be live on Sunday, June 13th, Beginning at 12.30 Eastern Time, we hope that you will be with us for that event. Again, our congratulations to Jeff Bodine, who brought it home here today, winning his second road course victory of his career. My thanks to Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch. And our congratulations to Jeff Bodine. I'm Bob Jenkins. Thank you for joining us here at Sears Point International Raceway. For now, so long, everyone.